Good morning, cricket fans, and greetings from the Caribbean. We are coming to you live from Sabina Park. It's day two of this round five match in the Cricket West Indies Championships between the Jamaica Scorpions and the Leeward Island Hurricanes. Andrew Chan in your company. An ugly thorn compared to the rose beside me in the form of Kimberly Forbes. A pleasant good morning, Kimberly. Good morning to you, Chad, and good morning to everyone who are watching. Yes, and uh, the state of the game is 173 for 6 to the Jamaica Scorpions. A fight back after being uh, 59 for 5 and then 125 for 6. Carlos Brown, the opener, is still there. He's unbeaten on 68. It's been a fantastic innings from him. In terms of the Leeward Islands, with Jeremiah Louis and Colin Archibald, the two Pacers really doing quite well. And uh, so, I mean, really and truly, you have to say the Hurricanes ran away with that first day, but it could have been worse for Jamaica because Carlos Brown, I think, was dropped at least twice. Uh, but so far, he and Abby J. Mansing have put on quite a decent partnership here. Your thoughts on the state of the game? this morning Kimberly well the the Scorpions they'd want Man Singh and Brown to come out and continue on the way they left off yesterday and try to get at least another hundred runs on the board but the plan of the hurricane is to get the remaining four wickets and try to get in and not that whatever score is set off and try and put some pressure on the Scorpions yeah, quite so. It'll be interesting to see who they start with. Of course, Jeremiah Louis is the man of the moment. Uh, three wickets yesterday. It's with really, really good bowling from him. Quality, quality bowling. And uh, I think, well, of course, the other, the other situation is that on Sabina Park, uh, according to records and, uh, and knowledge passed on by everybody who's been here and everything else, that uh, it's good for batting on the second day. Yes, 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 because we have seen it so far in the tournament that on the first day, especially when Jamaica sent in to bat first, they struggled a bit. If, if you look back on the first game against the Win Windward Volcanoes, they were dismissed for 159 runs. The big man, Jimbo, is going to start from the southern end, Michael Holding End. And he's, of course, the captain of the Hurricanes. I can't wait to see him bat as well, Kimberly. I'm anticipating always a that joy. too. Yes. <laughs> Abby J. Mansing will be on strike to face the first delivery of the second day. And of course, it's an early start yet. 9.30 a.m. in Jamaica, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Caribbean. Uh, we had a rain delay yesterday of about three hours, and then when they tried to restart at about five o'clock to play till six, there was an area in the outfield that was still quite wet. So before anything happened, uh, it was decided that game was stopped. And it was started at 9.30. Either way, the Hurricanes, I think, were very, very slow in their overrate. Of course, they were using fast bowlers primarily. Attacking field for Mansing and it's flicked. Oh, immediately gets something past that leg slip fielder for the first runs in the morning. Let's have a look at the umpire. No, it's a leg bite. So he didn't get that bat on that, but it's still a run to start the day. Yes, yeah, and they will appreciate that run. And um, we're seeing where Carlos Brown, he's on 68 from 137 deliveries, four tens, uh, ten fours, no sixes yet. He's batting extremely well there, Chad. Yeah, but it's a whole new thing because he has to start over like how he did yesterday. Oh, beaten. Beautiful delivery from Rakim Cornwall. And that actually completes the over that uh, started yesterday. Jamaicans get one more run to add to the total. And they are now 174 for the loss of six. clear blue sky so far here at Sabina Park. I'm a bit surprised the Hurricanes have started with spin because it seems that Dorham is going to start as well. I would have thought uh, you'd have given the fastballers at least a couple overs 
Again, I would have liked to have seen uh, Jeremiah Louis and Colin Archibald bowling in tandem, the two most successful bowlers. Louis opened with Thomas, and then Archibald was change bowler, and his partner in crime was Justin Greaves. But uh, in, in terms of you want to, I, I mean, <laughs> of course, da Durham and Cornwall can prove me wrong and, and whittle out the Jamaicans in, a, in the next couple overs, but. I still feel it's, it's, it's always best to start with your pieces, start on the front foot. Maybe Cornwall is thinking that maybe the spinners can get something out of the wicket on the second day. So he's going with them and then later on we can see the pace. But I would agree with you to try and bring the pace on pretty early. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of considerations. And of course, the other thing is, of course, with the rain yesterday, there would, have, there would have been some moisture that would have remained in the pitch. I mean, it's a beautiful day here at Savannah Park. Yet again, not a cloud in the sky over, over the ground. Absolutely perfect conditions for cricket. Singh is very watchful there. Yeah. Really, really economical. I mean, if you look at his figures, none for six of almost six overs. At least three or four maidens. No leg slip for Dorham. There's a short leg in place. Sweep out on the boundary. Oh, beaten! And he's bowled, actually. That's gone straight through the gate. Daniel Durham strikes. Abhijay Mansingh, after his wonderful innings yesterday, has to go. And it's absolutely brilliant bowling here by Daniel Durham. 174 for 7. Looking at the replay here, that one, I think, get past Mansingh quickly. And that is the, that is the wicket that Cornwall was looking for. It's pretty early in the session here. Seven wickets down now. And here's, uh, here's a look at the replay. Yeah, straight through. Marlon Pinnock, of course, that uh, legend and man who knows everything about the game of cricket, said that uh, an issue with Mansing is that he plonks his front foot down. You just see, uh, in before even the ball is bowled, it's a sort of premeditated stretch out so as soon as uh, Durham sees that, that that he's doing that and then just holds one and just drifts a little bit it was uh, I think it was absolutely straight delivery let's have a look at the replay again and uh, maybe our good director Matthew can slow it down for us a little bit of drift but I don't think there's any vicious spin there's a bounce as well mm -hmm. and a little pace too yeah, but just pull straight through. Just pick that gap beautifully. Derval Green, the new batter to the crease. Oh, beautiful. Gets that thick outside edge. And that's Ramal Lewis, who survived his first delivery. Excellent bowling by Dorham. 174 for seven, the Jamaican. get up to anywhere more than 210 I think the Jamaicans would think okay we've done a decent enough job um, well in terms of a recovery obviously 210 is still a little bit low well sometimes the low, low batting order tend to get runs yeah turned on into the leg side and it's a quick single does Brown want to come back for two he is coming back for two and uh, the pickup is a little bit slow there that's from Justin Greaves running down. Um, so Brown gets two. It's good to see Ramal Lewis in his first game of the season. Back and pushes that. 
but uh, didn't get that pass past that field at that short mid on position. So there's a long on in position as well as a cow corner mid wicket fielder as well as a deep backward square leg. And those are the outside fielders for Cornwall as he bowls to Brown. There's a backward point, short extra cover and a conventional mid off. Drifting down the leg, maybe he was back and he was trying to s pull that one into that mid wicket region. I think the umpire said it was a little bit too high there, but that's not that's the wrong stroke to play. Play straight. Once you play straight, then you won't be getting in any trouble at all. Yeah, I think he would have been better advised to try to push that down to long on, maybe get the single. Because obviously he'll want to keep the strike. And that short leg goes into a leg slip position. I like that I like that position there, that leg slip, sort of wide leg slip. He's almost in a Carlos Brown's pocket there. But you can see that Cornwall is spinning in, is bringing it very, very sharply into Brown. This one is forward and covers it well. That is the end of the over. And Daniel Durham will get a full one at Ramal Lewis, the new batter. Well, we want, I would want Carlos Brown to get on to a century. But the whole day yesterday and come back this morning, and for him to play that shot about two deliveries ago, I want him to get back into the groove that he was in yesterday where he was very watchful, very patient at the crease. No need to try anything recklessly. Yeah, it's just the two fast bowlers in the hutch, but Dover Green can bat a little bit. Goes for the big swipe. It's high in the air. It's straight enough. And it lands just underneath our commentary position for a six. Ramal Lewis has decided, well, I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to show you what I'm capable of. Yeah, in his first game, it's a good way to get off the mark with that boundary. Went high in the air. It really lingered in the air for a little while. Didn't get it that far past the roof. Long off is back in position now, and he's forward to this one. Plays it defensively. A hundred and eighty-two for seven. As you said, maybe they can get to 210 and maybe even push it from 210 to 250 and get that batting point. Even if there's nothing in the glass, Kimberly Forbes sees it as glass half full. <laughs> yes. With what beverage, I will not care to ask her. I know she doesn't like juice too much because it's too much sugar. Yeah, some water. It's just pure water for you or fresh fruits? Water. No coconut water? Water. No coconut water? Mm -mm. Really? How do you not like coconut water, Kimberly Ford? <laughs> oh, beaten. Get appeals for the edge? No, nothing there. Brilliant take from Jamar Hamilton. We'll have a look at the replay on that one. Um, but uh, in terms of <laughs> seeing an edge at the end of the over... 182 for 7. Ooh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But the reaction, uh, credit to Dorham, he didn't really react. He just sort of turned around and asked the Empire, well, your thoughts, sir? But uh, it was all Hamilton there. Yeah. 55 over is gone. 182 for 7. Louis sees on 6. Carlos Brown, who has been at the crease from ball 1 yesterday, he's on 70. Had a good knock with 
Romain Morris, a partnership of 66 runs. Did away nicely by Brown. Well, he pushed it to two. He's looking at it. No, that's uh, that feeling there from Greaves. Came in very, very quickly. <laughs> Jamar Hamilton fainting and shy at the non strikers end. They will have to try and build a partnership here. Goes for the big sweep, a top edge, and he's gone there. Well, 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 that was ill-advised from Ramal Lewis. The big man strikes Rakim Cornwall, and that was a dolly of a catch. For the slipper, that was uh, Daniel Dorham. And that's the score, 183 for 8 now. And my co-commentator... We saw that's how uh, Morris got out yesterday from Cornwall. He was trying to go across the line. It's the same thing here with Lewis and take some edge to the man at first slip. Second wicket down in the third over of the morning. The big man Devil Green comes out. Primarily plays as a fast bowler for Jamaica, but uh, according to Penny, he's very good, and he was originally actually a number three batter. But as a spin pair, you have to give credit to Rakim Cornwall and uh, Daniel Dorham. They're really, really effective. They're both tall fellows. Uh, they vary their pace nicely. Um, and of course, they have that combination of right arm versus left arm, so I don't think a batter can ever really, really get as comfortable as they would like. Yeah, and with Cornwall with over 400 first-class wickets under his belt, they are trying to attack him, but he just remained calm and bowled that line and length. I'd like to say a good special morning to our friend Marlon Pinnock, known to the world as Pinny. <laughs> He was born a sir and later anointed himself a lord. So he's Lord Penny as well. <laughs> At the end of today, though, he'll be anointed even further, so you'll have to call him His Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> and he's anointed by himself. That's how great he is. So we are in the fourth over of the morning here, Chad. Scarpe and they lost two quick wickets already. The over come to an end of 56 overs gone. The score is 183 for eight. The, what they should have done is try to, cut, uh, as you mentioned, they, we had rain yesterday. There's some maestro underneath, un, underneath the pitch there. They should have come and wait and batted even a half hour before starting attacking the bowlers. In terms of the other games in the region, just to let you know what's going on, in St. Augustine, the West Indies Academy after posting 300, the combined campuses and colleges are 48 for 2. The Trinidad and Tobago Red Force were bowled out to 172 against the Barbados Pride, who are currently 136 for 4. And the Windward Island Volcanoes in a spot of border. They're 32 for 3. In reply to Guyana, Guyana's 308 all out. Meanwhile, there's also women's cricket going on in St. Kitts, Kimberley Forbes. 
the Windward Islands women are 36 for 3 in the T20 Blaze and they're facing the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force Divas. 36 for 3 after 11 overs. I must say that game is going pretty well, that tournament, the T20 Blaze. Up in the air. He delivered that one, Daniel Dorham, just a little bit back of the crease. His foot was just in front. His front foot was just in front of the back crease. Almost pushing a little bit too hard at that one, Carlos Brown. His application has been absolutely admirable. As Carlos Brown, I mean, he has had his bit of luck, of course. Um, most at the end of the over, 183 for eight, and uh, I think that little bit of luck can be summed up with how he got his 50 Kimberley Ford. Because if you remember, he got a single, and then there was an over through that went away to the boundary, yes. it took him from 46 <laughs> to 50. That's how he got his half century, but he's been in there from ball one. Carlos Brown and he's done really really well and if he's there at the end he can certainly be proud of what he's done indeed up in the air is that an inside edge on the pad no nothing from the umpire have a look at the replay on that one Plays inside the line of this one, Dover Green. Is he trying to get a run there? No, he won't. Dover Green was the saver last week, Friday, for the Scorpions. In terms of the Jamaica innings, Kimberly, I mean, I've been thinking about it, and yes. There's been good bowling, good offerings by the uh, by, by the entire Leeward Island bowling team, bowling unit. But I also think that uh, after this delivery, I shall share my deep thought. I also think that the Jamaicans batter, the Jamaican batters were just a little bit too attacking. The time, it, 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 there's a time and place to be attacking. Mm -hmm. So if you look at some of the dismissals, particularly uh, Romaine Morris, Brandon King, those dismissals, they were just, they were just trying to be too attacking when it just wasn't necessary at, at the time. Particularly in Romaine Morris's instance, because I think he had hit a boundary early in the over and then tried a, a sweep shot and was bowled. Yes. And Brandon King tried to play a forceful shot and it was just caught straight at mid-wicket. At the end of the over, 183 for 8. And we saw one with Rama Lewis too. He was going after Cornwall just now. You have to respect the good deliveries. When you get the bad ones, then that's when you punish those. But don't try to force the shot when it's not there. Goes for the sweep shot, does uh, Carlos Brown. Gets good connection on that one. Got a drifting down the leg side. And he gets a good four, 187 for eight. That boundary takes him to 74, 75.
But of course, the other thing is, I mean, on the positive side for Jamaica is Carlos Braun getting a decent score. He's had some forties as well, sort of like Kirk McKenzie. And it's been, if you look at Jamaica's performances, it's been propped up by the middle and lower order. Mm -hmm. So it's from the Jamaican management and Jamaican team perspective, it's good to see that somebody at the top of the order is getting runs for Jamaica now. And hopefully Carlos Brown can use this innings to go from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. Because I think in any form of cricket, you need, of course there are partnerships that need, that need to be there. But there also needs to be somebody to hold up an end. And so if Carlos Brown can do that in this game, which is a hard game with it, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes at the top of the table, uh, or close to the top of the table, they have a very good team. They have a very, very good bowling unit. Mm -hmm. Then it, it, it bodes well for you. Yes. And the Jamaica team, they have a good batting team as well. But the batters, they just need to apply patience at the crease. Fifty-nine overs gone. It's 187 for eight. Carlos Brown. He's on 75 from 157 deliveries. Derval Green yet to get off the mark. So two early wickets for the Scorpions. As Man Singh, he's gone for 15. Roman Lewis, he's gone for 6. Dancing up the pitch, hits it straight back to the Cornwall on the bounce, and he, the big man sends that through immediately. <laughs> Very good cricket from him. He, all, he always seems to defy <laughs> logic. Brilliant stuff from the big man. Liverpool Green was safely back in his crease. Edge past that first slip. Will it run down to the ropes? Will Devil Green get four to get off the mark? He does indeed. Well, well, well. Rocking Cornwall pulled the edge. It was past Jamar Hamilton in a flash. Oh, well, well, well. Marlon Pinnock is saying that slip is too wide. They need to come a bit closer to the keeper. And he's sending a message now to the Leeward Island Hurricane team. And I think Dorham has made the adjustment. Yes, he's very, very close in now. Brilliant, brilliant stuff from Rocking Cornwall. Dancing out the pitch again. Hoiks that into the mid-wicket region. Absolutely agricultural there from Duval Green. Almost as he was cutting some long grass in his <laughs> backyard. Yeah, Derval Green is showing that, hey, I'm not going to be pinned down. I'm going to attack you guys. And he rehearses the shot at the non-striker's end. And again. <laughs> Maybe he's remembering that stroke that he won the game with on Friday. Carlos Brown gets a thick. Well, I don't know if that touched it. Pad. We wait for the signal from the umpire. I don't think he got any by. No, it's buys on that one. So some fortuitous runs here for the Jamaicans. Carry them closer to that uh, psychologically magical 200 mark. Well, it doesn't matter how the runs comes. They will really appreciate those. Yeah. Although Carlos Brown would, say, would be saying, hey, umpire, you could have given me that as four runs. It's four runs anyway. Played outside the line of this one. Good stuff here from Racking Cornwall. 196 for 8 after 60 overs.
Now, in terms of Durbel Green's approach, Kimberly Forbes, do you support it or do you? In a bit, I'll support it. Once it's there to be hit, can go after it, but do not force those shots. Looking at the arbor over at Port Royal there, Chad. Yeah. Well, Carlos Brown might just tell you tell him, hey, let me get be, let me get my twenty five first and then you can do what you want. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it to two fifty, eh, Mr. Green. Be interesting to see how he faces against Daniel Dora. Will he immediately go on the attack? And uh, ooh, vicious, vicious there from Dora. Bounce and turn. Yes, back to what you said, the 25 that is needed for Brown to get to his half century. Maybe he's saying just be supportive to his century, I should say. Durham in his 10th over, 16 for one, bowling pretty well here. Edged past Rakim Cornwall at slip. This will run down close to the ropes. And they come back for two. The fielder as well. Brown was interested in a third. Green wasn't even looking at his partner. I think the three may have been on. But mm -hmm. it would have been good awareness there. Especially to get Brown back on strike. It's a colors game here, Kimberly Ford. Brown and Green batting. <laughs> That's driven pleasantly by Durable Green. Show a level of confidence there with that drive. And all the Leeward Island Hurricane players are wearing their white, wide brim caps other than a uh, keeper and selling it off. One. That was a little bit dangerous there from Carlos Brown, but he played it well in the end. 199 for HS, one more run for that 200. And uh, will Devil Green go on the attack against Rakim Cornwall again in this over? Well, I advise you not to go anywhere, Kimberly Forbes. <laughs> Well, that's uh, three runs coming from that over from Durham. <laughs> I want to see this matchup. We saw where Durval Green came down the wicket twice to Cornwall. Dances up the pitch, goes high. And it bounces a couple of times before it gets to long on and sort of anticlimactic there. But <laughs> all it is is a run for the Jamaica Scorpions and it's a very, very important run because that gets them to 200. It's now 200 for eight. And Searching for a run here. There was a delayed reaction by Carlos Brown, and he gets there safely in the end. It's another leg by. They would want to get to another 49 runs just to secure that batting point. They're on 24 runs on the table.
Dancing up the pitch again. Again, the tug at a long on. If he's going to do that, they will green. They're not sensible cricket. Okay, you dance up the pitch. It doesn't mean that you have to hoik it or to try to hit it out to the park and down into Kingston Harbour. Mm -hmm. If you're working that single around, then that's not that. That's not bad cricket at all. End of the over, 62 overs bowl, 202 for eight. Some final thoughts from Miss Kimberly Forbes before she is replaced by Penny. Yes, the Scorpion, we just want to continue with Derval and Brown at the crease now. Try, try not to play any careless shot, but try to keep the scoreboard ticking and get some runs on the board and see if they can get past that 250 mark to secure that batting point. They really need those points. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Kimberly. Do enjoy your second food plate of the morning, because I know that's what she's going next door to do. And have a chat with our producer and director, Matthew Rajaram. Daniel Dorham continues and Marlon Pinnock. After conducting his multi-billion dollar business this morning, is here. Rumor has it he's traded up his Jaguar for Rolls Royce. And is in need of a chauffeur because he's decided I'm not going to drive myself anymore. Good morning, Penny. How are you? Good morning to you, Mr. Andrew Chong. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are to our viewers across the world. So the heat starts so far by these two teams, Andrew. Yeah, so the story of the morning is, of course, Jamaica started the day 173 for six. They've added runs. Carlos Brown is still there. But the Leeward Island Hurricane taking two wickets, the night of uh, one of which was the overnight batter, RBJ Mansing for 15. He was bowled by Doran Penny straight through the gate. And then uh, nice drive straight up in the air. I don't know, it's a spectator's catch. Uh, and of course, the other wicket to fall, Ramal Lewis, who was caught by Durham at slip off the bowling of Rocking Cornwall for just six. I think they only added two or three runs to their overnight score before they lost the man thing. Derval Green so far, 10 from 23 deliveries. Real fighter is Derval Green over the years for the Scorpions. Of course, Carlos Brown is well set high up. He's made in first class century as well. Mm. He's 25 runs away. Derval Green, if you look at his first class career, playing 40 games, scoring 1,278 runs at an average of 20.3. We want better that average for the Scorpions though as you mentioned press and drive this time down to long off Andrew showing good potential here is Derval Green of course Carlos Brown running out of partners and the man Derval Green we call him steel here in Jamaica mm. he's a real fighter good character as well Devil Green has actually manipulated a lot of the strike here, but uh, Carlos Brown will get a single to take him up to 76, and that will end the 63rd, 204 for 8. And I don't think O'Shane Thomas is on the field, Penny. I, I can't... Uh, yes, he is. He's on the field. Oh, he is on the field. Well, that's that 42 know. jersey. Oh, yes, there he is. Now wandering around at... Uh, Mid off. Well, that's good. That's certainly very, very good to see. Of course, he suffered a horrific injury uh, while fielding yesterday. See, so if you're just joining us this morning, this is the second day of round five of this Western East Regional Championship game being played here at Spina Park. It's the Scorpions against the Hurricanes. Yesterday, we lost. Two and a half hours of play 
due to some showers here at Spina Park this morning two wickets the scorpion lose inside half an hour of play so the hurricanes doing a fantastic job this morning Cornwall picking up a wicket and also Doran yeah it's been a it's been a really good innings by Carlos Brown uh, been a lucky as well of course when he's had his luck yeah of course he was dropped at slip yesterday of the bowling of Archibald at second slip man grieves no the appeal this time like before nothing doing from the umpire maybe a bit of inside edge or he might have just gotten out of the line of that one seem have to a be look at the replay on this one seem to be just outside the off stump he was pretty close there Andrew Bertha shout yeah uh, pretty close pretty close indeed but the good thing for the Scorpions Carlos Brown occupying the crease so far facing 167 deliveries I th but I think uh, that just shows how good his innings has been because even after 160 plus deliveries he's still getting challenged by Cornwall uh, and it's been uh, the, the Hurricanes really do have a very very good bowling unit yeah and if you realize so far in this contest Rakim Cornwall getting the ball to bounce and turn here on this wicket here at Spina Park hence why there's a leg slip in place as well there's a short leg as well he's getting the ball to come into the right-handed brown tries to get a single off this one to hold on to the strike this Carlos Brown but he doesn't get any luck there Jeremiah Louis Bull a tremendous spell yesterday for the Hurricanes as well as Archibald together they picked up five wickets between both at the completion of the 64 204 for the loss of eight Daniel Durham last year in that Super 50 against the Scorpions picked up seven wickets so the Scorpions will be mindful of him as well and so far so good for him all in decent areas figures of one for 21 so far they're very very economical has been Durham uh, I mean, the, the batters have, have had gotten Cornwall away a little bit, if you want to see that. But Dorham, Dorham really hasn't given anything at all. I can only think of maybe one four in his third over, and that's about it. There probably have been others since, but I really can't remember. He's really, really, really economical. Quick single here, three fielders converging, and that's excellent batting there from Dougal Green. Excellent running between the wickets as well. Played with soft hands, and hence why, in the end, it was an easy single to the Scorpions. These two batters in the middle, both aggressive runners between the wickets as well. A bit pushed a bit uppishly there by Carlos Brown. Trying to force the issue here. But he's I think he's trying to shred that gap between uh, that short mid off. Back is this one. And uh, conventional sort of extra cover fielder. Because, of course, there's that long off back on the boundary. If he gets it wide of that long off, that's what he's looking for. Goes for the cut this time. He gets that behind point. And that will run away to the ropes. That will take Carlos Brown to 80. That was a short wide delivery. Real loose now. Real loose one from Durham. 
Tremendous shot there from Carlos Brown. Short and wide. Begging to be hit and Carlos Brown won't miss out on that. He gets his 80th run of the inning so far. I love how he got over the top of that one. Let's have a look at the replay on it again. After this delivery. Oh. Yeah, we'll look at it after this delivery. Thank you, Matthew. Providing nothing happens on this delivery. Yep. Yeah, he just got over it. I love how he just got over it. Stayed, at, stayed over it and directed it behind point for four. All along the two. 205 for, 209 for eight at the end of the over. That shows the class of the man Carlos Brown. All season so far. He's been out there for a number of overs. And hence why this is easy pickings for him so far. So far, 175 deliveries for his 80 run. In the last game, Pete Samon made 81 from 188 deliveries. 178 deliveries. So it goes to show the occupation of a crease. Tends to give you runs at the wicket as a batter once you apply yourself out there. And batters for the Scorpions in this game got start but haven't capitalized. Well, I'll disagree with you on one thing because I don't think it's been easy pickings at all for Carlos Brown. But he really has shown application. In terms of uh, in terms of batting, he's been there. He, he actually faced ball one. Uh, that's, uh, that seems so long ago yesterday morning. And of course, this would be good if he can register mid first class century as well. Terrible green. Is that the wicket with him? And we know how Terrible green plays. Very aggressive player by nature. Yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of Carlos Brown, that actually means with the time being now 10:15 in Jamaica. Appeal for stumping. Nothing doing from the umpire there. His Ooh. foot did raise up to Bill Green, but I think he got it back down just in time. There's a little bit of overbalance, almost a sneaky play there from uh, Jamar Hamilton. Good awareness there by the field as well. Yeah. His foot did raise up to Bill Green, but to his credit, he got it back down in just in time. And if you take a look closely on the field set here by Hurricanes after this delivery. Dancing up the pitch, goes straight. Does he get enough of this one? Indeed he does. He's been threatening to do that against Rakim Cornwall Dubal Green. Finally gets away with it. And it's a towering six straight back over the bowler's head. Shot of a 30 there by Durval Green. Just came down the wicket and hit that ball straight as a die for six runs. And that shows the confidence of Derval Green. 215 for loss of hit here at Sabina Park. Beautiful sunshine here at Sabina Park, Anju. Yes, indeed. Lovely day for cricket. Coming back to Carlos Brown after this delivery. Yeah, he's been at the crease for, I, I would make it about 5 hours and 15 minutes. If you, start play, if you think we started play yesterday at 10 o'clock and we played until about 2. And he's been in there from ball 1 and then another 45 minutes, close to an hour this morning. Well, the partnership so far between these two batters is 32 runs very quickly. Yeah, absolutely valuable runs here for the Scorpions. Terrible green, 18 of them as well. Getting useful contribution for the Scorpions this season. Terrible is advancing. Dancing up the pitch again, flicks that into the wide long on position. And uh, I think it's sensible batting here by Dable Green, but he pinches the strike again from the long suffering and poor Carlos Brown. They end the over 216 to 8. Excellent batting here being shown by Derval Green. Turf on Charles Green. Excellent campaigner. Been a fighter. 
Who for the years for the Scorpions, both with bat and with ball, came up chumps at valuable times for the Scorpions. And now the Scorpions would want to get a batting point here out of this game. Of course, Carlos Brown, as it has a hand, would want to register his mid first class century. 20 runs away. Running confident, Mr. Terrible Green looks very good so far, Andre. Pack offside field here for the Hurricanes. There's an extra cover on the boundary. through his overs very quickly into his 13th. One for 26 so far. Scorpions, they lost two wickets this morning. J. Mansing and of course Ramal Lewis. So far so good. These two batters tedding their ship here. Building a partnership. Beautiful delivery. Beaten caught. Derval Green all ends up there, Andre. Peace. Yeah, absolutely brilliant stuff here from uh, Durham. Which I think is why none of the batters have really, really gotten a chance to attack him. Um, you can see that Dover Green trying to upset Rack in Cornwall, but in terms of Do Dorham, he has such good control. And I realize he's very in these deliveries as well. That is very special of him. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. Judgment there from Dover Green, but that was probably a whisk away from the whole stump. Mm. Penny is holding his head and bowling. That was mighty close to the off stump, but excellent judgment by Dover Green. Yeah. Credit to him on that one for sure. Two hundred and sixteen feet. Ten minutes before the uh, first scheduled water break, and uh, I'll take my leave for a short break and allow the two Jamaicans, Kimmy and Penny, <laughs> to do their thing. Absolutely wonderful Thursday in Jamaica, Penny, and of course. Uh, while cricket is going on, I know there's a there's a, a big event at the office. The champs track and field events in Jamaica, is the largest in the Western Hemisphere. It is indeed. I was uh, I was interested in getting tickets for Saturday, but somebody told me it'd be borderline impossible <laughs> to go through that process. Parkos. At the National Stadium. Not a pack crowd here at Sabina Park though. With Carlos Brown. So far so good for him. He's doing an excellent job for the Scorpions. Goes to the sweep shot. Oh, is that caught? That is brilliant stuff from Jamar Hamilton. Not sure what happened there, but uh, we'll have to have a look at the replay on that one. I think it hit off that man at that short leg there and ballooned. Hamilton was diving away. Steady by Rocky Cornwall, a man with 406 first class wickets to go with 53 test wickets as well. Up in the air, O'Shane Thomas is coming around and takes the catch. Is that the end of Carlos Brown? It is indeed. It's absolutely unfortunate that he goes, but it's a well played 80. The Scorpions lose their ninth wicket at this with the score of 216. A disappointing week to get out here at Spina Park by Carlos Brown. 
just a rush of blood here as you can see he was no way in control of that shot and hence why he perished for a well played 80 from 177 delivery well played to Carlos Brown but in the end just fell short by 20 runs to get his maiden first class century so it's water break here at Spina Park They're actually taking the drinks break now, so we'll take a drinks break and be back with you very, very shortly when Miss Kimberly Ford will join Marlon Pinnock in the hot seat to take you through the next half an hour. Welcome back to the West Indies Regional Championship Round 5 action from Spina Park. She is going over wide long on this time. His first delivery and it's a boundary. So OJ, she is need no second invitation here at Spina Park. Scorpions up to 220. For loss of nine here, the second tee. This West Indies Regional fifth round action from Savina Park. Give me really a humid day here at Savina Park. Yesterday, last close to three hours of play due to some showers here in Kingston, Jamaica. This morning is absolutely beautiful sunshine. Completion of the first over after the water break. The Scorpions 220 for the loss of nine. As we say, special welcome back to Miss Kimberly Forbes. Yeah, thank you, Peanut. Some early spectators here with us already. But it's good to see Carlton Bard Jr. and of course Odin Brown. Both selectors of the Jamaica Scorpions as well. So it's good to see the past players being included 
in the panel. And, and, and I think the gentleman in the glasses is pretty upset, and I think he's talking about the dismissal of Carla Sprong, who's at, who have been at the crease from yesterday and how he got dismissed. And that gentleman is also brown. <laughs> <laughs> been at Spina Park for a number of years from I was playing youth cricket that is back in 2006 it's a long time so Daniel Durham so far one for 26 Green is hitting that ball through the mid wicket area area just out of the reach of that fielder there that's another, that's another single to the score is up to 2-1 two, two, for the loss of 9. OJ Shields have 5 deliveries Kimmy, from Doram. You think it's a good move to take the single off of her first ball by Derval Green? Well, I think what the conversation, well, I don't think so. He should try and shield Shields a little bit from Doram who has been bowling well and he's bowling straight a load appeal this time he's given so OJ Seals goes leg before to Doram who picks up his second and the Scorpions all out on day two just an hour and five minutes of play he's leg before Doram picks up his second Leeward Island Hurricanes bowled out the Scorpions for 2-2-1. Two, two, Your final thoughts on the Jamaican Scorpion in Skimmy? Yes, and I'll talk about the, the wicket of Shields here. As I had mentioned before the delivery that Durham, he's bowling straight. Uh, Green, who have faced so many deliveries from him, he should have uh, tried to protect him from, from, protect Shields from Durham there. But all in all, a good delivery. The Scorpions, they managed to get 221 runs on the board after they were at 59 for five wickets. The bowlers, they will have to come now and do their part and take it from there, you know.
welcome back to the West Indies Regional Championship. Round 5 action from Spina Park. Scorpions first delivery. Good delivery to start by Derville Green. Beating Kyle Louis outside the off stump. This is an attacking field will set here by the captain of the Scorpions, Brandon King. Three slipper gully. There's a backward point. He's covered here's mid on and mid off. And also a man at the fine leg bone. Jesus says special welcome back to you, is Kimberly Forbes. Well, thank you, Pinot. So 221 made by the Scorpions. It's bold! Absolutely brilliant delivery to start by Turful Green. He's on the money, and so too the Scorpions. The first wicket goes down. Of Mikhail Louis made back-to-back -back centuries in round three. But here at Spina Park in Kingston, Jamaica, he's back into the pavilion without scoring. Top delivery by a top-class bowler in Turful Green. That was such a, a marvelous delivery to get him out. He's gone for a duck. We call that a silver duck, uh, Pinock. That was a brilliant delivery from Derval Green, as I said before we went off, that the bowlers, they will just have to come and apply themselves. And it's a good start here for the Scorpions. Indeed, excellent delivery. Pitching and straightening. Kyle Louis had no clue what was happening. But one thing for sure though, the Scorpions strike very early at Spina Park. Incoming batsman seemed to be Carty. Very good batter is Carthy. But you would normally see a Carden Bryan coming from that end. Carden Bryan out to an injury. He suffered, I think it was in the third. Brown, Spina Park. God, Brian, as you know, as a magical figure here at Spina Park. Great history at Spina Park in a Cena Cup game against Kingston. Just unfortunate he's injured. Picked up 16 wickets for 42 runs in a Cena Cup game against Kingston Cricket Club. Turval Green so far on the money for the Scorpions. And why not? Got a wicket with your second delivery of your spell. Scorpions would want to make a mark here in this fifth round action at Spina Park. And if he continues to bowl in that area, definitely he's going to create some problem for the Hurricanes. Indeed, Kimmy. Good areas so far by Derval Green and hence why Captain Brandon King. Offered him three step on a gully. Scorpions just playing with two pace attack here, Kimmy. You think it's one of the best moves by the Scorpions? Yes, I think so. You have, a, you have a young fast bowler in Andre McCarthy he's from I think it's St. Elizabeth in the squad haven't played a game this season so far strain on the leg stump is green this time he's whipped through the onside by Casey Carthy cross one they are back for the second that's all he will get so Hurricanes are off the mark and with two runs to Casey Carthy. Just train on the line of the leg stump was green. Easy pickings for Carthy. 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 Carthy, we know how dangerous he can be. Played for the West Indies. He got an half century as well. But the man green will call him steal it. Beauty. Pitch of a delivery this time, Kimi, to complete the first over with Hurricanes 2 for 1. And it is a successful over. Look at this delivery outside of the half stump. Beautiful delivery from Derval. And it is 2 for 1 in at the end of over number 1. OJ Shields will 
be the bola coming from our comments box end. You mentioned earlier how good of a bowler uh, Gordon Bryan is. He really had a good start here from day one against the Windward Island, the CCC. But unfortunately, he's out because of injury. He bowled pretty well, decent line and length, picking up wickets for the, his captain and the team. Well, so far, he picked up 10 wickets already. Yes. And that injury really affected him as well. And also affected the Scorpions. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, Shields and Derval Green, they're really putting the work uh, for the Scorpions. Well, of course, Shields will be bowling to Kieran Powell this time around. Kieran Powell, the number of games for the West Indies at the test level. So where he get he got 114 against combined campuses. Yeah, Kimmy is in tremendous form as well. Both the two openers cutting centuries in this year's regional championship 2024 so he's off the mark immediately the first delivery just stood tall and punch that ball towards the onside and shot us through for a single the score is three for one And we know that OJ Shield, he has the pace. And once he finds that line and length, I hope he can find that early, then he will definitely create some problem for the Leeward Islands. Yeah, definitely. The last game here at Spina Park, he was bowling with tremendous pace. And now the young West Indies Academy batters in all sort of bottom. Look at Kiran Omar Akeem Powell played 44 test matches scoring 2,113 runs good delivery by Shields had the car tee in a lot of water there still at the wicket Powell 25.8 average 46 ODI scoring over 1,005 runs an average of 22.8 just a 1 t20 game for powell he's scoring 12 runs but hey look at his first class career kimmy 144 games scoring 7890 runs at an average of 31.4 lovely pleasant looking back drive through the cover region but just for a single Still. Yeah, and the plan for King continues. I, I, I'm going to be like the captain now. This is how I'm thinking. If they can get another wicket, either Powell or Carty, and, and, and put to apply some pressure on Leeward now, and before they go to lunch, try and get in another two or so and try to have them at the pace and even try to get them out before the day's plays end and apply so go back in and get a, a, a lead ahead of the the leeward islands try to apply some pressure on them three slip on three slips and a gully so you can know that they're expecting some edge around their uh, pinnock indeed good looking slip garden which you see is looking to register a wicket here this is sensible cricket here by the Hurricane. Just stood tall and the sponge shot ball to the arm side and shut his shoes for another single. Casey Carthy. Such a good cricketer. Made his ODI debut back in June of 2023 against the UAE played 22 ODIs scoring 578 runs at an average of 34 first class career plays 45 matches 2000 
and 44 runs so far at an average of 26. I think that average is a bit low for a top order batsman, Kimi. Yes. But so far, so good, Kimi, this morning. It's a beautiful morning here at Savannah Park for the cricket. Yes, with glorious sunshine. <clears throat> Not only just cricket happening in Jamaica, we have the boys and girls champs happening at the National Stadium now. So it's a very eventful weekend here. Going into tomorrow and Saturday, Kimi. Yes. It will be a packed crowd at the National Stadium. the ball to move away from the right hander to complete over number two with hurricanes five for one Martina Minley also out with the injury as well Kimi mm -hmm. and you look at the Martina Milley, career first class career. Over 120 first class wicket for him as well. But Derval Green, over 100 as well. But the thing about Martina Milley, some of those wickets are for the Barbados team. But Derval Green, 100 wickets is all for the Scorpions. So that means Derval Green is the leading wicket taker for the Scorpions in regional cricket so far. Oh, it's a beauty there from Green. Continue to live outside of the off stump. But if you realize with that delivery, Kimmy, just going wide and handling the ball into the right, the left-handed Powell. And he had no clue there. And could start here by Green. Great errors been maintained so far by Derval Green. This time just train on the line of the leg stump. Powell just a leg by to the Hurricanes total. Green is getting the ball to swing away from the right handers. So hence why Captain Brandon King three slips waiting in a gully I'd like to see Derval Green give me just come about foot stump to the right hander that could have created that will create some damage there <clears throat> that's the damage they would have wanted too First delivery to get rid of. Louis was a peach of a delivery. That should do Green confident a whole lot as well. In and out of the Scorpion team due to injuries. But always been fighting for his place in the Scorpions lineup. Earl Green expressed himself as a true warrior. Doesn't matter where he falls, whether he's batting or bowling. We saw that on Friday. Earl Green, born on December 4th, 1988. So, of course, he's 35 years of age, Kimmy. And still putting in the effort that is required of the Scorpions. 
two fighter. Remember Derval Green playing schoolboy cricket for St. Elizabeth Technical. Batting at number three. Edge and he scored. Is it? Just dropping shot of Kurt McKenzie. But excellent, excellent bowling here by Derval Green to complete over number three with Hurricanes six for one. Well, well, well. Just dropping a little shot there on, on Kurt McKenzie. Three overs gone. It is six of one. And, and, and the plan is to try and get any one of these batters. Don't want them to get settled there, uh, Pinnock, because they can create damage if they do get settled. Yeah, as you mentioned, two experienced players in the middle, both played at the highest level. So there's a level of experience. You look at uh, Kieran Powell playing over 144 first class games. That tells the whole lot about him. Oh, yes, it does. And especially getting off a, a, a game of 114 runs. Well field at mid off by Captain Brandon King. Over pitch delivery there coming in from OJ. She is lucky enough he got away with that. But if you look at Powell over the years, he's been up and down in the West Indies test team. Remember John Campbell. So it was like a Ron Robin thing between him and John Campbell. In a portion of the bat this time, beaten for pace on this occasion here. OJ Shields came in generating some pace here at Sabina Park. A very quick youngster. Have some wickets to his name as well as OJ Shields. Picked up three against the West Indies Academy as well. But a good line been maintained so far by these two Jamaica Scorpions fast bowlers. Very economical so far is OJ Shields. Since his return to this Scorpions team, picked up wicket in every game so far, and important wickets as well. This one is a tremendous shot. Is it gone all the way? Just one bounce over that middle fielder, and this is how Kiran Powell plays. Four more runs to the Hurricane over oh, pitch delivery there, Kimmy. As you can see here in the replay, and dealt with severely by Kieran Powell for his first boundary. Well, it was a bit too wide from his, from him as well. <clears throat> Played it quite well. Shields will have to get a little closer to Powell. Just full on that occasion, dear Kimi. Well, this time he goes short, and Kieran Powell pulls that one over the backward square for six. Tremendous timing here on the part of Kieran Powell. Well, bowling to Kieran Powell, and that was a good shot. He handled it well, well controlled, and he punishes it. Ten runs from the over so far with one legal delivery to go. I would say 10 runs from the last two deliveries, Kimmy. Yeah. So Brandon King having a chat there with Shields. And this is the way Powell plays. Loves to be counter-attacking. 
very positive as well what would be the plan of OJ she's now so the slight adjustment being made in the field here by captain Brandon King as well so the goalie comes out to the cover region Kimi and the backward square leg goes back on the boundary and a long leg feeler on the boundary as well so that completes the fourth at 16 for one So Powell, he's on 12. Carty, who is on 3. Going at a run rate of 4 runs and over. Exactly 4, Kimi. First start so far by the Hurricanes. Who's that wicket of Louis in the first over? Terrible green. But for Terrible Green came to the right hander. There's three slip in place and a gully. Terrible Green getting the ball to shape away from the right handers. Oh what a nice shot. That is a dazzling shot to the boundary for four. It is indeed short, wide pegging to be hit and easy pickings for Carthy he won't miss out on that and that's his first boundary Kimmy and he's up to I think seven the score is up to 20 for the loss of one here at Spina Park in this is for an action the Scorpions in this round started at sixth place while Hurricanes were at second Kimmy Edge shoot that slip cordon and down to the third man boundary and lucky runs here for Casey Carthy. My 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 excellent bowling performance here by Derval Green. Just unlucky there, Kimmy. Yes. Another boundary for the Hurricanes. Derval Green, he's bowling well. Apart from that first delivery that went to the boundary, he's bowling well, getting some edge there. Just ballooned over the man at Gully, FG Mansing. So, if you're just joining us, this is the Western East Regional Championship. On five action from Sabina Park yesterday. The Hurricanes they won the toss. Ask the Scorpions to take for a strike. Scorpion posted two two one. Kimi all out. Jeremiah Louis three four nineteen. Oh, beauty. Pete Nolan's up by Derval Green. Good comeback here by Derval Green. Just been on the unlucky side so far. But he's bowling with his heart out here is Derval Green. As the sun comes out bright here at Spina Park. As bright as Kimmy blows here in the commentary box. <laughs> they trail by another 197 runs. But the line that we're getting from Derval Green, it is pretty good. Maybe one and two deliveries, he might stray down the leg side, but correct himself pretty early. And what if, if they can get another wicket here, Pinup, for the Scorpions, 
because you can see the intention of the batters. Powell is on 12 from 10, Carty is on 11 from 17. Even though they lost a quick wicket, they're at 24. But if you look at the field, Kimmy, there's a pack offside field. Just two men on the offside to complete over number five with the Hurricanes, 24 for one. lot of batters in this Leeward Island Hurricane lineup as well. So if you're just joining us, the Hurricanes lost their first wicket in the first over. That of Louis was, he went to Darvel Green and since then a Pretty decent recovery by Kieran Powell and Casey Carty. OJ Shields will be looking to break this partnership. Well, his previous over went for 10 runs, a 6 and a 4 had came from that over. But it's good to see OJ Shields just adjusting his line to Kieran Paul. Over the years, he's been very aggressive in all format. Seem to be. Here at this time by Shields. So clearly the plan now to Kieran Powell is to bowl outside the half stump with three slips there forcing him to play that loose drive outside the half stump. It's a good strategy employed here by the captain of the Scorpions, Brandon King. the area that OJ Shields should be looking to bowl just outside the foot stump area yes and a good comeback from him in this over three dots so far well so far so good in this over for Shields Sorry. Scorpions would want to make some early in rows in this hurricane innings. Teachers, I can guess. He pulls and pulls well. That will go. A glorious shot out of the park for six. Well, once OJ Shields is shot, this man, Kieran Powell, quick to capitalize. And that was easy pickings on the part of Kieran Powell. As the 30 run partnership comes up of 32 deliveries, Kimmy. Yeah, we saw, we saw where he tried that short delivery and he was punished to the boundary for four and he tried it again. This time he's gone for a six. So Karen, po uh, Karen Powell, is, he's in a no nonsense, mo nonsense mood. Once he gets it, he's going to take advantage of it. Well, he, Kimmy, so far the two pull shots are all six. Well, mm. so once a shot to Kieran Paul so far <laughs> in this innings, he's pulling it all the way for six. Yes. And once you over pitch, he's quick to capitalize. And of course, some delays here at Sabina Park. That ball had gone somewhere out of Sabina Park, Kimmy. Yeah, it seems as if something is wrong with the. Ankle of Shields. 
Ooh. see the physio comes out this is not good for the scorpion skimmy not at all just two piece in in this jamaica scorpions lineup just terrible green and so. and and the first game that was played against the volcanoes shields wasn't a part of it because he had some injuries and this will bring some concern to the the team so if Shields get injured here, Kimmy, Chairman Blackwood will have to bowl his medium pace as well. Because if you look around, there's no other fast bowler except Derville Green. Yes. Let's hope that he'll be okay. How we know Pete someone. <laughs> Maybe Pete someone will have to bowl all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> I'm wondering if he landed badly on that uh, left foot there. If you look at the run rate so far of the Hurricanes, over five runs. Seems there's a spot out there that is spotted by the yes, umpire as well. Yes. So the head groundsman is there making some adjustment. Now you see him on camera, that's the guns one making some adjustment to the wicket as well. That's where OJ Shields landed badly. The delivery what was swatted out of Spina Park. So if you're just joining us, folks, this is the West Indies Regional Championship Round 5 action from Sabina Park. This is the second day, of course, yesterday. The Hurricanes, they won the toss, sent the Scorpion into the bat. Uh, two and a half hours lost yesterday, came due to rain here at yeah. Shabina Park. And of course, the Scorpions, they came back this morning and lost their remaining wickets very early and ended at 2 2 1 all out. The Hurricanes in pursuit lost the wicket in the very first over Mikhail Louis was out to Derval Green he didn't score then these two at the wicket Kieran Powell and Casey Carty so far 30 run partnership for the second wicket and these two at the wicket look exceptionally well for the Hurricanes Kimmy yeah, and it was just a, a 46 runs added to the overnight score of 175 for the Scorpions, which they went on to make 221 and a good knock from Carlos Brown. He was at the crease from ball one yesterday. Fortunately, didn't get that one that he wanted to go over the top with well on the bat. But overall, it was a good knock from him. Yes, yeah, just unfortunate he didn't get his maiden first class century. It fell short by 20. Good delivery, good response and by OJ Shields. And that's the area, Kimmy. That's OJ Shields should be looking to bowl here to Kieran Powell. Yeah, and, and, and a good comeback after he was hit, hit out of the park for that six. Good delivery there from Shields. And as you mentioned, anything presents itself Kieran Paul is quick to punch upon this time he's shot and he's pulling this one in front of square and they are back for a second run to close out the six at 32 for one One extra so far. Pretty tidy so far from the Scorpions. The hurricane, they are going, they are going, they are going at 5.33 runs and over. Carlton Ball having a relaxing morning here. Well, of course, why not? 
about uh, three or four spectators over that side, Kimmy. <laughs> so all the stands is there for them to relax. But one thing for sure, though, it's a sunny morning here at Sabina Park. It's a beautiful day for cricket. As one of the greatest commentators in the business, Mr. Andrew Chang. Back in the commentary box. Edge just wide of that fielder at Gully seemed to be Abby J. Mansing and it goes down to the third man boundary for four more runs, Kimmy. Unlucky scenes here for Derval Green. Well, it's two times you have gone in the 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 region of Mansing there at Gully. The minute it left the bat, you could have heard Derval Green said catch. And Kimmy, if you realize Casey Carty just playing away from his body. Lucky enough, he's just out of the reach of Abhijay Manson. This time he's just straight on the line of the leg stump. This time, will take by Morris. Overemphasizing here, Turval Green. I definitely think Captain Brandon King to think about putting a next slip or another goal in. It's a way all Casey Carty is playing, he's just fidgeting outside that half stump. Totally agree with you. <coughs> but he's bowling well. They got those boundaries from good deliveries. And based on how he's bowling, Kimmy, they realize just two feelers on the onside. So looking at that straight is mid wicket where Carlos Brown is, I, I definitely think Carlos Brown would be the man or even take out that cover feeler and put him just to the right of Abhij Mansing. Turful Green getting the ball to shape away from the right handers and so far causing problems to Casey Carty. I hope that Brandon King can hear you from here, uh, Pinock, to bring that uh, second gully in. And if you look at Turful Green's figure so far, one for 14 and two bungees just edged through that slip card a load of peel must have been some inside edge there terrible green thought he had his men had his hunger's head in the air for some seconds there kimmy yeah but just gotten down in time casey carty let's have a look at it again It's just some bat involved. That's why it was a stifled appeal by the Scorpions. Some Rasta there. Rasta far and Kimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Pro yeah. Jamaican as well. Yes, I. Enjoying some lovely cricket here at Spina Park. And why not, Kimmy? It Pleasant Thursday morning here at Spina Park as well. Whipped away this time by Paul through the onside. They've crossed one of their easily, easily executed a second run. That? So, so far, the Hurricanes been scoring pretty quickly, Kimmy. And that's the end of over number seven. It is 39 for one. The Hurricanes, they are going at a run rate of 5.71. But before I take my leave and Chang comes in,
cheese will be continuing from our commentary box and as we say a special welcome back to mr Angie chan uh yeah good uh, good morning penny and good exchanges for the morning so far of course uh, duval green striking early getting rid of mikhail louis with all the run on the board and since then Kesey Carter and Kira Paul have been pretty good. Carter a little bit uh, lucky on a couple of occasions. Paul has been very, very good. And uh, he attacked OJ Shields on a couple of occasions. Just three on the line of leg stump this time by Shields. Striving here, Andrew, for to generate some pace here at Spina Park. Two shot delivery so far to Kieran Powell. Boat dispatch for six. Again, Kieran Powell, we know how dangerous he can be, Andrew. Yeah, quite so, Penny. the sheet back in to the right hand in Casey Carty Devil Green has been really really excellent I think OJ Shields has been expensive as his figure shoe done for 21 and Devil Green is just been unlucky Andrew yep. had to head through the slip cordon and still have Figures of one for thirteen. Late swing down the leg side, appealing for a little tickle on that one is OJ Shields. Nothing doing, says the umpire. Very, very close to the bat. Was close to that leg stump as well. I think it was always going away from the leg stump. But uh, it prompted Powell to have a word with Carty mid pitch. Yeah, definitely the angle is taking it further down the leg side. And if you see where the wicket keeper Morris took that ball, he realized it was missing leg stump. I think what these two are, are doing is really is really good at the moment because of course they have to ride out that new ball penny. The new ball is the danger for them. It's already accounted for Mikhail Louis. Quite disappointed because I did want to see him bat a little bit. Maybe not to the, uh, the detriment of the Scorpion because Penny wouldn't like that. But well, of course, he's an upcoming youngster. He's doing well in regional cricket, so why not want to see him? Yeah. Uh, but of course, uh, in the second innings, I will get my chance, hopefully. Pulls out of this one, this Carty. Of course, in the third round, he scored a century in both innings as well. Mm. Join the list of the great players who scored 100 in both innings of our regional cricket. And Devon Shotgun Smith, who dominated regional cricket for a number of years. Great Christopher Henry Gale. Just to call a few, there's a whole lot more, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, but it was a brilliant delivery from David Green that got rid of him. Took nicely by Carty. That's the single down to that midwicket region. Pinches a strike, 40 for one. And it's drinks, actually. Uh, we'll have a short break right now. I'll we'll be back in a couple of minutes' time.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park with the Leeward Islands Hurricanes 40 for 1 in reply to 221 posted by the Jamaica Scorpion. And we're going to see spin for the first time in terms of the uh, Leeward Islands innings and pace throughout. Um, Pete Salmon will resume proceedings from the southern end of the ground. Speed Summon Doing a great job so far for the Scorpions with ball as well. Well played there by Carty, just turned it around the edge. The Jamaicans might immediately want to think about putting in a leg slip here. Good start here by Pete Summon immediately getting the ball to bounce and turn off the wicket. But there's no leg slip though. There's a man at short fine leg in Kurt McKenzie. He has a good action this salmon. In some news in cricket around the region, well, let's see what's going on. The Windward Islands women have been bowled out for 81 in the 20th over in the women T20 plays against the Trinidad Antigua team. Uh, the, way the combined campuses and colleges have progressed to 104 for three. And replying to the West Indies Academy's 300. Motaro for the Academies on 42 not out. He's batting at number three. Mmm, Penny. Mmm. Zishan Motaro played very well for the CCC. One for the future for West Indies cricket. He's actually, uh, yeah, he's at a number three position. Uh, I wonder if he was a night watchman last night. <laughs> Indeed, so he's still there. Oh, that's probably why he went in. The call, Penny. But he's still there and fighting. Barbados Pride have progressed to 209 for 5 against the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Jonathan Drake's again in the runs, 51 not out. Uh, Kevin Wickham also contributing with 34, 46 from McCaskey. Terry Pear taking two wickets. At the end of the over, it's 40 for one. Maiden from Pete Salmon. And the big news is going on in uh, Coolidge, Antigua, after the Guyana Harpy Eagles posted three. 108 penny, get this, the Windward Islands Volcanoes are 87 for 8. Mm. Yes, indeed, that is uh, quite a collapse indeed. Tevin Walcott is not out on 22. But looking at this scoreboard, 14, 7, 1, 5, 10, 3, 0, 0. Isaiah Thorne, that under 19 player, has 4 for 38. Ronaldo Ali Mohammed 3 for 27. Well, well, well. And uh, Andrew, if you realize the youngsters coming up through the West Indies on the 19 program, they are dominating regional cricket at the moment. Yeah, Prime indeed. Private example, Jonathan Cheeks scoring a 100 the last game and now getting a half century. Yeah, and then of course they're, they're graduating to their regional team because, of course, a Jewel Andrew. We'll see him later. Devil Green switching ends. Uh, and a look at uh, Azishan Motara. Career best in regional cricket here at Sabina Park. We picked up 7408 against the Scorpions. You look at uh, Mikhail Louis. Didn't score today though. Mm. Score back to back centuries in round three. Was the young Jamaican Jordan Johnson one to look out for? Hasn't really scored as much runs as he would like. Up in the air, just falling just short of that field at mid off. That was loose from Kieran Powell. Devil Green almost took a second. Pete Salmon did well diving forward. I, I, 
let's look at the replay I, I think Pete someone just delay there in moving in for that catch I think Andrew that should be a catch Terrible green not to happen well, customer I thought it fell just short of him and he did well to try to dive forward I don't know if it was a drop as such but if Penny says so then I will no dropping short <laughs> dropping short yeah 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 Cut nicely by Paul. Well played. Okay. Yeah, it was just dropping short, but uh, I don't think Salmon someone could have done any better than he did because he did try to drive forward and get a hold of that one. Maybe I, I, I didn't notice if he was walking in quickly. Maybe he was walking in a little bit quicker. Uh, maybe he wasn't as deep as he was. Steady recover. Steady start so by by the Hurricanes. But Devil Green has been really, really good. And it bothered Kisi Kati. Kisi Kati is really lucky to be there. Got him on the playing on the edge a couple of times. Missing the edge. And uh we, there, there was some problem with the with the run up there at the southern end, and uh, it was a slight delay, a little bit earlier, about uh, 10 or 15 minutes ago. And Dermot Green was just indicating that that same spot is a problem. Oh, glorious shot through the covers. By Casey Carthy and four runs to his credit. Lovely looking shot there, Andrew. Yeah, shot of class from that man, Carthy. Uh, sounded absolutely beautiful off the bat as well, Penny. I think he got full connection on that one. Over pitch there by Green. Yeah, I think, I think that's basically the lesson of Sabina Park. I mean, it's a lesson of of red ball cricket wait for the bad balls to put away but particularly here in this match at Sabina Park you see that Carlos Brown waited and bided his time and when there was a bad delivery put it away and so far that is what the Hurricanes are doing at the moment see if you can tell God to get Edge down to the vacant third one this time for four more runs. Two fours in a row by Kisi Kati. He certainly intended the first one, probably didn't intend the second one, but they all count. And there's a little bit of damage to, Lee to Devil Green's figures at the end of the over. 49 for one. Three bonges going down to that third man area off the bowling of Devil Green. Hence why his figures is one for 26 from five take 12 away from that just 14 but a steady response so far by the hurricanes Andrew yes indeed after loss that wicket in the very first over by green since then it's all Kieran Powell and Casey Carty show both players into the 20s as well it's a run rate you'd be proud of in uh, white ball cricket. <laughs> Just under five. <laughs> and there's that damage area there, uh, Marlon Pinnock. Excellent work by our cameraman. Just on the s northern end of the ground, that's the wicked people roaming Morris's leg. And that's the damage area. And if there's a dent there, then of course it's dangerous for the fast bowlers. Thank you very much for that, Gordo. Look and another look at it there. Edged? Is that an edge? Well, well, well. Not an edge this time. Ball spun slow. And in the yeah, end. I think it was an edge there, Penny, because of course there's no signal from the umpire. So 50 comes up. 50 partnership as well. Mm. Indeed. Well, that's quite true. 
<laughs> uh, Mikhail Louis unfortunately falling for a silver duck. Second delivery. And he was absolutely and positively clean bowled by Dewell Green. That off stump went tumbling. That was I, I, I saw you, had, you were tumbling as well, Penny, matching the stump. <laughs> flip the flip. Oh. Ed, turn the gun around the corner. They're going to run a quick single. The throw comes in, and it's a little bit of a bad one there. Very true, dear from uh, Mackenzie. Else, I think Powell would have been struggling. It's all happening here, Penny. Uh, so I think, in terms of the, in terms of these two winning, Kieran Powell, I don't think has put a foot wrong at all, other than that uh, almost catch the mid off. Well, of course, he's been positive, Andrew. Dancing up the pitch there, um, but I think Carty Carty has been really really lucky. Um, I mean that that shot to cover was glorious, but. His other boundaries have been fortuitous. Gets with on this one, cuts this nicely, does Kieran Powell? And he will get four to take him up to a spankingly quick 28 of 23. And in in, his, in, in so far, two six and two fours. As you can see on the replay there, bad delivery from Pete Summon. Two shot, giving Kieran Powell a lot of wit outside the some. And his form that this man is in, he won't miss out on that. Yeah, he's such an elegant batter, is Kieran Powell. Even his sixes were delightful pulls of O.J. Shields. He didn't go hard at it, just used the pace of the batter, the bowler. Dancing up the pitch to this one, trying to drive that straight, I think, to get that single up the long off. Not quite getting it on that occasion. End of the over, 55 for one, 11 gone. That run rate goes up to five runs and over, Penny. <laughs> Indeed. So I think uh, the Jamaicans maybe need to think about how they're going about this, even though uh, a lot of those runs have been luck as well. And Kisi Kati is, continues to ride his luck. Just 20 minutes before 12 o'clock here in Kingston, Jamaica. So far, so good for the Hurricanes. Steady recovery. From that first over where Derval Green disturbed the stumps of Mikhail Louis. And since then these two at the middle doing an outstanding job for the Hurricanes. That's what I want to see from Casey Carty. Just get those singles, get yourself comfortable. And let Kyron Powell do the heavy lifting on the other end because he's doing a good job at it. And you look at that, if he continues to rotate the strike, the fast bowler in Derval Green will be bowling to a right, left, right, left. So maybe throw him off his line as well. But so far, Derval Green been on the money from the first delivery he bowled this morning. Oh, feeling for that one was Kieran Powell. That's a nothing shot there, offered here by Kieran Powell. They're trying to just be a little too cheeky. Just looking to steer that ball down to the fake and third man, Bonji. Lucky enough he didn't get a edge through to the wicketkeeper, Morris. In terms of the other bowling options, Ramal Lewis still available, RBJ Mansing as well. Played by Powell coming back into him just a little bit. And Kurt McKenzie as well. <laughs> awesome off spin here. Jeremy Blackwood as well. Indeed. Well, Jeremy Blackwood can be very useful as a Jamaica Scorpion spin with two seamers. In the case where Brandon King sees it necessary. Blood, Blackwood could be very vital. 
feeling for that one again. The try was there, beautiful bowling by Dubal Green. A good contest here. Test in line outside the half stump to the left handed Powell. And they've given him that big, lovely gap in extra cover here, Penny. As the uh, cover field is fairly straight, as is the mid off fielder. Green getting that delivery to shape away from the left handed Powell. shot of the George Headley stand here in Kingston, Jamaica. And that's the Michael holding hand. Derval Green is operating from the Golden Walls end. Short deliveries, pulling the ball in front of Square. Four more runs. Absolutely carnage here at Sabina Park by Kieran Powell. Yeah, well played by Powell, sat up nicely for him and just swiveled in a true Caribbean style, true West Indian style. Gets a delightful 40 in the over, 60 for one. They're maintaining that run rate of five runs on over. So far, so good for Kieran Powell. Anything that is shot, he's quick to capitalize. 2-6 so far off the pull shot and now a four through the, the mid-wicket area. He's up to 32 from 29 deliveries. Casey Carthy so far, 27 from 41 deliveries. 60 run partnership so far, Andrew. Yes, indeed. Just about 15 minutes before lunch on day two of this Western region and championship. Round five action from Spina Park. Someone into his third, none for six so far. Goes to the big hoik, there's Carty. A uh, couple bounces before it gets that field at wide long on. That's Leroy Lock there coming in from long on. Just chopping well short of him though. Looking to force the issue this time around was Casey Carthy. Pete Samuel will know here that he can't afford to give Kieran Powell any width. Let's give him a little bit of width there, but not enough for him to get that through the extra cover region. Powell looking to create some space there. He's backing away, trying to pierce that gap through the offside. Dancing up the pitch, weighs it on his pad as it dribbles out into the leg side. Pete, someone saw him coming, just jacked, jacked it down a bit. Well played in the end though. And he just wasn't to the pitch of it. Well pulled by Pete Salmon, angling back in. According to Penny, that one going down the leg. I want to have a look at this one. Will you get in a chance to look at it now? Yeah, it was going down leg. Two slip in place now for Powell. Goes with a big sweep. Well fielded by Jimmy Blackwood. Didn't get an edge there. But if he had got the edge, that would have been the most spectacular catch ever. <laughs> Excellent bowling by Pete Salmon. 61 for one. That was a very, very testing over from the spinner. Final delivery was very slow. Brilliant from Jimmy Blackwood. Absolutely brilliant. That was a spectator's catch if you ever saw one. We were talking about earlier about Rama Lewis. 
Well, now he's introduced into the attack by Brandon King. Mm. Ramon Lewis is going to get a chance to turn his arm over. Devil Green Bull really, really well, I think. Uh, maybe getting a little bit of tired in the heat. But he really, really bowled well. Asked a lot of questions. Roger uh, Shields not as effective as uh, as Green. A little bit unlucky as well. Rama Lewis, former St. Elizabeth Technical High School cricketer. Played under 19, under 15 as well. Captain the West Indies under 19. Captain players. Brandon King and Nicholas Perron. So it's good to see him getting the opportunity for the Scorpions. Well, let's make sure he takes this opportunity. And with both hands as well. Indeed. Not a bad start at all. Right on the money, as you mentioned, Andrew. With on this occasion, well fielded, brilliant stuff there by that field that cover. Excellent there by Brandon King, leading from the front. Diving away to his left to prevent any chance of a run. Good commitment here being shown by the Scorpions as well. Ooh, cutting back in brilliant. Sharply. Just jump, jammed his bat down on that one, did Carty. Let's have a look at the replay on that one. I think that one spun pretty sharply back in. I think the Scorpions should be looking at the prize on the next week or two just before lunch. A little bit of width again. That one goes to King. Yeah, as you can see, the replay on the ball before. Just spinning back sharply into the right handed Casey Carty. Yeah. I mean, I think that one spun so sharp it might have missed leg stump. <laughs> I'll tell you how sharp that spin was. But I think Brandon Carty King could have stepped inside the line of it. <laughs> well played at the end. Well survived. Oh, beautiful again! Well, well, well. Rama Lewis starts with a maiden as well. Indeed. I think Brandon King should be looking to attack these batters. Get some close feelers in. You realize Rama Lewis getting the ball to spin immediately in his first. And hence why I think a leg slip would be very vital for Rama Lewis. Someone so far, very economical so far, Anju. Yeah, indeed. Nice driven by Powell, half stop by Salmon. There's a field out along off, which is the feeling, and they'll get a single. As the right hander uh, Casey Carty comes in to strike, there's a leg slip in place that of the captain Brandon King. And that man coming in on the backward square leg comes into that point region for Casey Carthy. Oh, oh, flicked straight into short leg. It went so quickly though that uh, Carlos Brown is wearing that on his chest. Actually, I think he's in a bit of discomfort here. Straight into his chest. If he had held on to that, it would have been a brilliant catch. But of he course, would have felt a full flush of that delivery. 
that would have to stop there, Andrew. So for a 62 run partnership between these two batters in the middle for the Hurricanes, stage a recovery after there were no run on the board for a wicket. I have to be careful in how he's looking to turn that ball around the corner, Cart. His short leg and leg slip waiting. Good attacking feel here. And this is where experience comes for the Hurricanes. Two batters in the middle. Very experienced players at the completion of the 15. 62 for one, the Scorpions. I mean, I would even go for that and put a, a short extra cover just to make uh, the batter feel a little bit cramped. Ramal Lewis will now get a chance to bowl to the uh, left-handed power. I think this could be interesting because the spin he's get, he was getting back into the right-hander would go away from the left-hander. So it might be uh, dangerous times here for Powell. And in that case, I would certainly have a second slip. I support you on that, Andrew. But this time he starts on the leg side. Well done by Romy Morris. <laughs> Catching it in his pads. Doesn't matter how you catch them once you catch them. Strain on the line of leg stump. The other thing, of course, is to consider that uh, just five minutes before lunch, so Kyron Paul might have just have a momentary lapse in concentration. Ooh, beautiful. And that's what I'm talking about there, right there, Penny. That is absolutely gorgeous stuff there from Ramal Lewis. Excellent start so far by Ramal Lewis. Eight deliveries so far and haven't conceded a run and hitting good areas. Yeah, beautiful again. Absolutely beautiful there. It's no. so good that Roman Morris can't get a hold of him. No. Talking about a second slip. This is where it's very vital. And Brandon King sees the opportunity. And immediately put in Kurt McKenzie into the second yeah. slip region. Excellent call here, Andrew. Yeah, I called it. I called it. Since early, Penny. Dancing up the pitch this time. Tries to negate this place in the air. And it is just over the head of uh, OJ Shields. He had his arms outstretched. Karen Powell in a bit of a mess there. He gets two. Indeed, struggle to play Rama Lewis so far in this over. Rama Lewis having an all sort of bother here at Spina Park. First two deliveries. Finally, he can see two runs as well. Indeed, the first two deliveries spun away from Kieran Powell. Then he advanced down the wicket. Lucky enough. Goes with a big sweep. Misses that one out completely. I would like to see Rama Lewis now get one that goes straight. Because Powell is in a mess right now. He's not sure what's coming. He thinks that it's all going away, going away. Get one to go on with the foot. Go on with the ball, with the hand, I should say. Like that. Going down the leg side though, a little bit down the leg side. And it might run away. How close does it get to the ropes? We wait for the signal from the umpire. It is leg by. That is absolutely brilliant stuff from Ramal Lewis. So action packed over so far, Andrew. Just heading down the leg side. Excellent call by the umpire. But so far, action pack over. But that was the one that went on. That Indeed. was the one that went on. Absolutely brilliant stuff. You can see that one was clearly going down leg side. Excellent decision from the umpire. But if he, if that one, if he gets that one just on the line of off stump, maybe a little bit wider. But this, Ramal Lewis, well, 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 why, where have you been all season for the Scorpions? Yeah. Because my goodness, excellent, excellent bowling here. An excellent decision by the umpire. Both umpires doing wonderful job so far. Salmon continues 
And this time he gets the swipe, does Kyron Powell. And it goes all the way for a towering six over long on. Not as smooth and as crisp as you would like, but certainly effective. Indeed. Free video coming in from Eat Someone just tossing the ball up. Kieran Powell just hit through the line there, Andrew. Over long on this time for six. Now there's no field at long on. The, the fielder back is at long off. And uh, deep backward square for Pete Salmon. I think this may very well be the last of it before lunch. I don't know if they, the umpires might want to squeeze in another. Ooh, too close to cut there. Good delivery from Salmon. Well, I don't think the umpires will have a chance to squeeze in another at this moment. Skiran Paul is up to 41 from 42 deliveries. Counter attacking in and so far by the left handed Powell. It's about a minute to 12 here in Kingston, Jamaica. Realizing now, Powell, that it's close to lunch. So after that six, he's gone back into his shell for the rest of the over. Good innings from him. It's kind of what you expect from Kieran Powell, 41 or 45. And, uh, and of course, he's going all guns are blazing. And I think that at the end of the over, I think there will be one more penny. I trust your judgment, Penny. I think it's about time that you start trusting mine. But the good thing is, Penny, that we'll get to see one more over from Ramal Lewis. And he'll be bowling to Kisi Kati. And so far, so good for Ramal Lewis. So far, so great. All he needs is a couple <laughs> of wickets in that column. They're definitely hitting good areas. An attacking field. No. For Ramal Lewis as a leg slip in him. well played by Carty, he rode the, the spin that time and oh we get to see the the Carty Powell battle the Ramon Lewis Powell Lewis, battle. Lewis Powell <laughs> battle thank you very much Vinny so the two slip still in place It's caught, is it? Yes, it's caught. So excellent bowling performance by Rama Lewis. And it pays dividend for him as he picks up a wicket and a very important wicket on the stroke of lunch on day two of this Western East Regional Championship. Kieran Powell goes caught by Carlos Brown. Good sharp catch there. So Leeward Island Hurricane goes to lunch at 72 for the loss of two. Your final thoughts. And as that easy Ramal as you like there from Ramal Lewis. He was always going to strike and now his figures look even better at one for three. Well, well, well. After all the hard work, Kieran Powell throws it away and immediately to add insult to injury, Penny. The umpire is called time and it's lunch. We'll be back in about 40 minutes or so with the Jamaica Scorpions cock a hoop there. They have the Leeward Islands Hurricane 72 for 2.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park in this round five match in the Cricket West Indies Championship. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes are 72 for two in response to 221 posted by the Jamaica Scorpions. Andrew Chan in your company for at least a half an hour after lunch. And uh, my co-commentator is Miss Kimberly Forbes. I have to shake her in the shoulder to wake up because she ate her rice and peas too quickly. <laughs> She's feeling a bit sleepy now. Wake <laughs> up, Kimberly. Pleasant good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Chad. I'm up, I'm up. Rama Lewis to start with the ball. 1, 1 for 3 off 2.2. Got the all-important wicket of... Uh, Powell. Yeah, that's... Karen Powell. Karen Powell. And the new batter actually coming out there, Jeremiah Louie. Powell caught at short leg in the form of Carlos Brown for 41. Beautiful delivery, well played in the end by Louis. He gets off the mark immediately. Uh, Louis is bowling pretty well so far here, Chad. Bowling some good line and length. Know that Scarpia and they will be happy to know that Powell is back in the dugout. Yeah, Casey Carter will have the world of batting to do, and he's doing it well. But that single down to Long on. What the Scorpions, what, what they will have to try and do here now, Chad, is try not to let a battle, a battle get settled. And if they can get rid of Carty. That will be good for them. Lewis finishes his wicket taking over. It's 72 for two. Actually, actually I think it's 73 for two. I'm actually wrong. It's 74 for two. Yes, it, it, they went to lunch at 72 for two and two runs added in that over. Pete Salmon looks like he's going to continue. We'll get start to see some clothes here now, Chad. We didn't see any this morning when we started at 9.30. Turn around the corner nicely by Carty. Actually, Justin Greaves in the middle, not uh, Jeremy. Beautiful there from um, Salmon, tossed up nicely. Greaves just getting enough on that one to keep it down. Yeah, looking at this, the bowling chart just now where the bowlers, they only gave away two extras. So there were a lot of extras coming in for the Leeward Islands when they were bowling. plan is to get Carty out now. I 
In terms of batting to come, I suspect the uh, young under-19 player Jewel Andrew will probably come in next. Well played by Carthy. He turns it around the corner again. The field from deep back was well. It comes around. Could have been interesting, but he didn't pick up cleanly. I think that's Leroy Lugger. They trail by another 145 runs. Oh, well bowled by Salmon. They have to be careful how they're turning that ball around the corner at the end of that over. 77 for 2. And it's a tidy over there from <coughs> Pete. Good comeback after lunch. Yeah, the Jamaicans just before the lunch break, as we see some people still enjoying lunch. Flicked nicely by Carty. Down to deep backward square leg. Yeah, the uh, Jamaicans arrested the momentum. So Dilbert Green got the first wicket of Mikhail Louis without a run on the board. And then it was a good little 72 run partnership between Powell and Carty before uh, Powell was dismissed by Lewis. So the Jamaican just managed to arrest that momentum and then immediately went to lunch. A bowling by Ramal Lewis. Excellent bounce there. That's probably what saved Greaves from being out LBW. So it's up to it's up to both teams have a chance to reset now. The Hurricanes will feel they have a decent platform because, of course, the Jamaican just made 221. Kimberly, it's not a, it's not a, a high score by any means. It could be competitive if they get a couple more wickets, of course. Right. And that is what the Scorpions they will have to work to disguise that one. It hits and hits hard. It's going for a glorious shot. Four is six. Gets it well on the bat there, Chad. Yeah, just got a chance to free his arms there. Drifted in a little bit there. Ramal Lewis won't mind too much. But well connected by Justin Greaves. Yeah, that as clean as a whistle. Beautiful response. Oh, that almost goes to that leg slip fielder. He was diving away with Kirk McKenzie. He's getting some sharp spin back into the right hand as is Ramal Lewis. Yeah, just to the left of that fielder, Kirk McKenzie, with diving effort. Definitely a bat pad opportunity. So this partnership consists of 14 runs. Goes for the tug again. Bounces a couple times before it gets down to that field at long on. So much bottom hand there from Greaves. 87 for two. Was a good knock there from Powell. And a good delivery to get, get him out there from Lewis. Forty one from forty eight deliveries. Ten runs from Pete earlier.
Pete is known to create some damage here. I haven't seen him really get into his stride as yet. Yeah, he hasn't settled down as much as Lewis has. But he's still bowling quite well. Yes. Number 17 of 6.2. Beautiful death at that time. That is absolutely beautiful stuff from Pete Salmon. But so far, f uh, in his second over of the launch, the previous one, he bowled pretty well, and this over looks good so far. Three dots from it already makes that four. Getting into his groove. Been bowling pretty well throughout the the series or the season solid defense here by Justin Greaves not taking any chances with Pete Salmon Similar feel for both spinners. I think they're actually almost exact. Turn around the corner, but no run there. That will end a maiden over for Pete Salmon. Well bowled from him. None for 17. 87 for 2. 21 overs being bowled. Just two extras from it. Taking a look at the scores around the region, the combined campuses and colleges have progressed to 160 for four, 160, and replying to 300 posted by the academy. Barbados Pride 278 for seven here um, after bowling out the Red Force, Trinidad and Tobago for 172. Shane Dorish not out on 39. 34 from Holder, 34 from Wickham, 72 from Jonathan Drake, 46 from Zachary McCaskey. And uh, lovely drive to the extra cover region. Got a bit of width there. Will it go to the ropes? It does indeed. Slapped disdainfully through extra cover by Casey Carty. The minute it left the bat, uh, you can see that Ramal threw his head in the air, knowing that that was going to go to the boundary. Too much width there. Makes use of, make, he makes use of it. That's Carty. Yes, yeah, so the Windward Islands Volcanoes have been bowled out for 113. Um after in reply to the Guyana Harp Eagles first innings total of 308 and currently the Guyana Harp Eagles are six for one Matthew Nando LBW to Darius Martin and a lot of action going on around the region in terms of the cricket know that the Jamaica girls they're supposed to play today that's the cricketers in the T20 blaze and they're going up against Barbados
game is supposed to start at 12.30 and the over comes to an end. <clears throat> it is 60, 69, oh, oh, 23 over is gone. Should I say 22, it is 92 for two. It's going at a good pace here at the Leeward Islands Hurricanes when uh, it's 4.18. When Kyron Paul was in the wicket, they were up to five runs and over. Uh, they're really, really making a big dent into that uh, lead, just 129 now. Of course, a lot can happen between now and then, Kimberly Forbes. Yeah, so not much boundaries coming in as when Paul was at the crease the bowlers they have, especially Pete coming back after lunch seems to find his line and length now Derval Green was bowling it so well high so in the air and that's over mid off how much does he get of it? He gets a good piece of it and it goes for four. Casey Carty marches on into the 40s and he's carrying the Leeward to 96 for two now. It's been really, really good batting, of course, by him and Powell. But Casey Carty is continuing where he left off. 42 from 65 deliveries. He's still having a goal. Credit him for the shot selection as well. Up in the air. I think that may have been off the pads. It's a pitch where the batters really can't get comfortable at all. can believe there's always something in it for the bowlers. Up in the air again. I know that's off the pad again. Well, well, well. Salmon, despite getting hit for four there, is asking some good questions. Yes. Credit to him for trusting his process as well, Kimberly. Indeed. That one is stabbed down by Carty to end the over at 96 for two. Yeah, just that four runs coming from the over. And a little comparison at this stage, the Scorpions, there were five wickets down. There's two wickets down now for the leewards. Hurricane, they chased by another, they trailed by another 125 runs. on we're probably going down the leg Lewis in his six over 20 for one be interesting to see if Grieve takes on that long on fielder again this over this time he drives wide of that field at mid off that is excellent stuff there tumbling attempt by luck to stop that one but that was well hit by Justin Grieve your timing and that's the 100 up for the hurricane well I, I change in the field immediately after that shot so they'll be taking out log indeed that was a superb shot to the boundary Good response there from Lewis. So it's interesting. Before before the lunch break, Lewis was a danger man. Um, now after the lunch break, Pete Salmon has taken over that role. Now 
but I think before the break, Lewis is bowling a little bit slower. That's why he was getting that vicious tune on bounce. Seems to be speeding it up just a little bit. We'll see how he goes in this delivery against Carty. Mm -hmm. Close that one down a little bit. Lovely flick there just in front of square. It bounces once or twice. The fielder comes around from deep back with square and does the fielding. And a 31 run partnership in double quick time here. We're still maintaining that, that run rate of 4.32. At one point it was at five runs and over. Oh, gets the inside edge. How did that one miss the stumps? A fortuitous four for Kisi Kati. That will take him up to 48. Really sums up his innings. A lot of luck for Kisi Kati. Well, he's been lucky since he got to the crease and that four ends the over. 25, 24 overs gone. Score reads 107 for two. Can count his luck pretty hard today here, Chad. Yeah, it's almost as if he has a leprechaun dressed in a rabbit's foot holding <laughs> a horseshoe in his pocket, Kisi Kati. But he's still there, 48 or 70, and that's the important thing for him. So it's P2 is continuing. Seems to find his line and length. And maybe he can create or sneak a wicket in here for the Scorpions. Edged. Got him playing and that one did beat Salmon. Well stopped by Jimmy Blackwood. I think it went too wide of him. But uh, squared him up there, did Salmon. This seems to be getting a lot of edge. If I was the captain, I would put in a second slip there. Yeah, indeed. Beautiful ball here again by Salmon. So Salmon seems revived after lunch. I guess he had a chat with the bowling coach. Come back with a different energy after lunch here. Umpire just conducting an investigation of the ball, maybe just a straggly string from the seam. Solid in defense is uh, Justin Groove. Stopped that ball absolutely dead. <laughs> End of the over, 108 for two. Kimberly Forbes is the. Uh, not overly happy with how Jamaican are going. <laughs> she wants to see another wicket of or eight. Well, if they can just get at least two more before T, then the Scorpions, they will be happy. And as the weather forecast said that we should be getting rain, you can see the clouds coming over now. I think the Jamaican just need to build a little bit of pressure here. 
because that run rate is still 4.32. Uh, Carty Andrews very, very capable of boundary hitting. Uh, and if the spinners offer loose delivery at all, well, they're in the business. Yeah, they, they will have to try and have the batters make that mistake and see if they can get at least two to three quick wickets. Slap down to long on by Justin Greaves. Carty, he's on 48. Vicious third again from Romaldo, which is badly lined. Excellent take by Rome Morris behind the stumps. Well, Chad, you saw earlier that the edge was peeled when Pete was bowling. Why not try to bring, a, bring in a second Gets slip him there? with there. Drives out through the cover region. I'm not sure it will get to the ropes, but it will be two for fifth for, Car for Carty. They're thinking of a third. No, the third is not on. But Casey Carty gets the fighting 50 for the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. Eight fours, no sixes. Uh, gets that off. 72 delivers. Strike rate of 69.44. As I was saying that I'll put in a second, I put in a slip, a second slip there. To see if you can have the butter, get some edge. Vicious turn against from Lewis. I don't know if that was off the pad or not. But I don't think the second slip is needed for Lewis. I think it's needed for Salmon because Lewis is bringing the ball back into the right-handers. When, uh, when Powell was on strike, I did want to see that second slip because he was turning it viciously away from the left-handers. So I like the field setting in terms of the short leg and the leg slip. If you wanted to put another field on the leg side, a leg gully maybe, then no problem. Well, since as Pete has found his line and length, I'll take a chance and to bring Man Singh here from the Courtney Walsh end. And see if he can get something. He, he, we know that he's known to break partnership and see if he can send one of these batters back to the dugout. And Nelson on the board as well with the last delivery of the 26th. Tries to turn that one again. He gets a little bit of bat on that one. And it's 112 for two at the end of the over. Kesey Carty moves on to 51. He will keep the strike. And uh, it's been solid stuff from the two after lunch. They came out with the score at 72 for two. Kieran Powell, the second batter dismissed just before lunch. Literally the delivery before lunch. And uh, since then, these two have put on some good runs. I think it's about 40 at this stage. Not that quick in math as Penny and Kimberly Forbes. English and history were my strong subjects. So just 35 runs added to the total after lunch. Trailed by 109, now the Leeward Hurricanes. I, I think it's good to see that, uh, that both batters are interested in singles as well. Yes, we know they're capable of hitting the boundary, but it's good to see that they're looking at rotating the strike, keeping the scoreboard ticking. Which is good. Beautiful bowling by Salmon there. He's really enjoying bowling against Justin Greaves, I can tell you that.
lovely drive by Greaves. Very straight. Not make the legs of his partner, Kimberly Forbes. And as Penny likes to say, he was equal to the task. <laughs> he see Carty. It's equal to the task of Pete Salmon. He is oh. indeed. That one was in the air, though. Flick very quickly past the short leg fielder. Once again, Carty pinches the strike. A half chance there for Carlos Brown on short leg. 115 for two after 27. Will he take the chance and uh, will he bring Mansing in the attack now or continue with Ramal Lewis? Lewis is going to continue. But I mean, it, it's something that uh, it's something to to really look at and consider, of course, in terms of developing our cricket here in the Caribbean. They're almost operating like 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 sub-Saharan pitches or, or pitches in the East in terms of the fast bowlers just get their sheen off the ball and then you get the spinners on. Up in the air, the catch is taken at short leg. That is the end of Kisi Kati. A rush shot against Ramal Lewis, but he falls for 53, 115 for three. Yeah, we have a look at the replay again. He looks at the bat, seems to get some leading edge there. It's a good catch from Carlos Brown. And they will be happy as much as Rama Lewis is happy with that wicket of Casey Carty who walks back to the dugout. He's gone, looks disappointed here. He's gone for 53 from 79 deliveries. And the new batter is the young boy, Jewel Andrew. There was a story about him, uh, and his mother said he's an absolute jewel. So that's why he's called Jewel, even though Jewel might be considered a feminine name, Kimberly Forbes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, if, if, she, if he is the jewel of his mother's eye, I'm not going to argue with Miss Andrew. And he has an opportunity here, of course, uh, to, to bat long and show his worth. Of course, a, a century at the under-19 World Cup, a really good fighting century from him. Yeah, he really batted well in that series, that World Cup series there. Three wickets down, and that's the wicket that the Scorpions, they were looking for, knowing that Powell and Carty back in the dugout, they will have to continue on the path and at least get another two more wickets you asked me the question earlier and that is what Rama Lewis is trying to do to see if he can get another two brand new challenge for the young man as well playing in a regional first class cricket Goes for the big sweep shot, but the big pull shot over the mid-wicket region. And he just gets it over it. Hung in the air a little bit. His first scoring shot. And boy, oh boy, it's a towering six, Jewel Andrew. He picked it up early and punishes it. P thought at one point that he'll have taken that one. It's gone for a massive six. Yeah, Pete Salmon is a fairly tall fellow at... Uh, Mid wicket. I think it hung in the air for just a little bit. I think he just got enough on it. Of course, the ball smacked into the concrete there of the Sabina Park stand. So the umpire just having a look at the ball to see if it's good to go. 
This ball has taken a beating in 27 overs, almost 28. But it shows the confidence of the young fellow, Kimberly Forbes. Yes, and a good way to get off the mark with a boundary. Under 19 years old, and there he was smacking Ramal Lewis for four. Well, Chad, you can see the ground staff, they're making their way pretty close to the covers. They're making their way pretty close there. At the end of over number 28, the score is 121 for three. And yeah, thank you very much for that, Kimberly Forbes. I will be taking my leave right now. Marlon Pinnock is kicking the bottom of my chair because he wants to get onto commentary so badly. So it will be Marlon Pinnock, a.k.a. the Pinny Meister, and Kimberly Forbes, a.k.a. Queen Forbes, for the next half an hour. by the Michael Olin and I can look at the feather banner and the ground staff made the way because the weather forecast said that we'll be having today again here Pinock welcome back Pinock as well as Charlie good afternoon to you Miss Forbes special good afternoon to all of you viewers wherever you are in the world it's Abigail Mansing will be bowling to Justin Greaves easily punch that ball out to the man at coming off the extra cover boundary Speed summon another single. To the Hurricanes total. And Ramal Lewis in his very first game for the season for the Scorpions. Doing an immaculate job so far. Picking up two important wickets for the Scorpions. And it's Man Singh been introducing the attack. Mansing to right hand the money to Andrew. Look at the Justin Greaves, age of 30. Born the 26th of February 1994. He's from Barbados as well. Being for the Leeward Islands. Hurricane. It's only shot. He's and just back and punching this one through the vacant mid wicket here at the crosser one. But in the end, four runs to his credit. So he's dealing in bunches so far, Andrews. He's second, a six and a four. He's up to ten. And the Leeward Island Hurricane up to two, up to one, two, five. For loss of three. One, two, six. The correction, one, two, six for the loss of three here at Sapina Park. Yeah, we know Man Singh, he picked up four wickets in the game against the Academy in the second innings. Four for 70. From 14 goals, sorry, it again. The feeler comes around, only be just the run. Well, so far, Andrew at the wicket looks very positive. How we go about scoring his runs? He's up to 11 from seven deliveries, courtesy of a six and a four. Good stop there from Man Singh. Looking good so far at the wicket. It's Justin Greaves. 41st class game scoring over 1,446 runs at an average of 26.9. Mm. Quick delivery through the air this time by Mansing. Beating Greaves outside the Austin. As you can see here in the replay here, Kimi. Quicker through the here this time. Just passing the half stump to complete the 29 at 127 for the loss of three. Well, two openers, they're back in the dugout, and Ramal has sent them back. That is the wicket of Powell and Carty. Well, they're having a good chat there in the stands. Good laughter there gentleman from Westmoreland supporting Rama Lewis as well yes and why not getting his first game of the season and doing a tremendous job no 
no sunshine here at Sabina Park for this evening session. Remember Rama Lewis playing for Kayana in that limited over version. And he was special with Bat and now getting the opportunity for the Scorpions and delivering as this wall is top behind square. But she is coming off the deep. Back with square like Bonji. Can't prevent another single to the Scorpions. One, two, eight is it for three here at Spina Park. And the lead Hurricane trail by a further 93 gimme. Healthy run rate so far. Over 4.34. Ramalu is getting the ball to spin on this track here at Spina Park. Hence why there is a leg slip in place as well. So Captain Brandon King looking wickets here in this fifth round encounter at Spina Park. A load appeal this time. Asking questions here is Ramal Lewis. It's been very special so far for the Scorpions. My, 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 let's turn our attention this, to this replay here, Kimi. Just outside the line. Excellent decision by the umpire. This time is a pleasant looking shot there, Kimi. Down to long on this time. At the end of over number 30. The score reads 129 for three. Two extras given away so far from the Scorpion bowlers. Justin Greasy is on 21 from 40. Joel Andrew 12 from 10. They trail by another 92 runs going at a current run rate of 4.30. Abhijay Man Singh is going to continue from the Michael Wollinen. And if they can get another wicket, I'm sure that Captain King will be happy with that. Look at Justin Greaves. Getting the opportunity at the West Indies level. Haven't kicked on with the bat for the West Indies. But shots like those shows the class of this man. Elegantly played this time. Down to this long on area. And he batted well. Last year in that Super 50 was very dominant. And so far in this innings, Kimi, look a complete batter at the wicket for the Hurricanes. It's getting rather cool here at Sabina Park. The sun is in. Takes some edge, runs down to fine leg, chases by the fielder, running hard, coming back for the second. They will just settle for two. German Blackwood was giving chase. He's very quick across the ground here, Kimi. <laughs> very short, but he gets to the ball as quick as you'd mention a Usain Bolt or even an Asafa Powell. <laughs> Maybe he should be at champs now. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> This time the youngster, Andrew goes this time through mid-wicket. And four more runs to his credit. His second boundary to go with a six. Well, he's been playing some confident shot there. Been positive at the crease so far. Faced 12 deliveries. He's on 18. The score rushes to 136 or three. So Mansing sees the intention of Andrew. So let us, let us see what uh, Mansing will do now. We know that whenever Mansing finds his line and length, he can really create a spot of bother for the butters. Talking about Andrew's place for the West Indies under 19 as well. Playing his third first class game at this level. Just under 200 runs 
in three games at an average of 28.8 kimi good delivery by abg mansing right on the money so well anjo equal to the task this time around as we say special good afternoon to our viewers wherever you are in the world it's fifth round fixtures here at spina park pleasant looking drive by the youngster very good to watch in the eye so far is Joel Hanjo to complete the 31st at 137 for the loss of three born the 7th of December 2006 Kimi <laughs> <laughs> just young cricketer great potential so we are awaiting the game at the T20 Blaze. That's the women T20 Blaze, Jamaica. They'll be going up against Barbados. We know that Jamaica, they are on nine points already. They won two games, get eight points, and also get an extra point for, the, get an extra bonus point, which is the batting point. Well, for Joel Andrew, it's a good opportunity for him as well to express himself so far he's doing just that for the hurricanes and look at him so far Kimi he's one for the future for West Indies cricket mm -hmm. well when I had watched that game the, the under 19 World Cup he really performed well This is runs here for the Hurricanes for buys. Of course, the wicket keeper Morris won't be happy with that. As a wicket keeper, Kimi, when it goes to buy, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> and Morris for the over the run so far, doing some good work for the Scorpions. And if you realize how Ramalus is bowling, he's getting the ball to spin a lot off of this wicket here to Savannah Park. So hence why there's a leg slip in place, Kimi. Pleasant looking drive this time by Andrew through the covers across for one and here back for the second. So far, so good for the youngster. Looks very good at the wicket. And he's been positive, always looking to score. And this is a beauty about his 21 runs so far. He's looking to score. And score quickly too. Oh, what a nice shot. Just turn your head and look at it. Watch it out of the park. And it's gone for six. Excuse me, timing coming in from Joel Andrews. He picked that up speedily and dispatched that over extra cover for six. Top claw shot by the youngster. He's growing in confident, Kimi, as the 34 run partnership so far from 26 deliveries. Yeah, that's 70 runs added to the total and a wicket uh, after resuming after lunch. Well, Kimi, so far, this youngster in Andrew seems like he's playing first class cricket for over a decade. Let me say 72 runs. <laughs> <laughs> 27 was, from 19 Pinock. That was a lovely shot. Any youngsters watching the cricket would enjoy that shot, Kimi. Yes, 12 runs from the over so far. Ramon Lewis in his 10th over. This time he's back, Kimi. Clipping this one out to deep backward square for another single for his 28 runs. And also the 150 comes up for the Hurricane. Yeah, and you can see, even though they get boundaries not too often, but the scoreboard keeps sticking. And if you look at the scoreboard now, Kimi just trailed by 72 runs. And this one is kept fine by Justin Greaves. And there's some work being done here by OJ Shields, but can't prevent a, a second run at the completion of the 32nd 
at 152 for the loss of three. Lewis Ball, 10 overs, 54 runs for two wickets. Joel and Joel Anjo is really batting. He's he's in a no nonsense mood. Twenty eight from twenty delivers. Greasy is on twenty four from forty two, and trailed by another sixty nine runs. The current run rate is four point seven five. And keep me to be honest, I love to see the youngsters coming to the regional level and really show why they want to be at this level. And so far. Joel Anjo doing a fantastic job for the Hurricanes. Yeah, and not, and it, we saw where, I, you're talking about the level, we saw where this youngster from South Africa, he performed so well. I think he had gotten the bowl of the series for the Under-19 World Cup. And he's selected in the IPL now. He's going to be playing for the Mumbai Indians. As soon as I get the name, I can share it with you. And that is what we want to see. The youngsters pushing a step further. Not settling for mediocre style. Yes. Want to be at the top. Want to be performing at the top as well. Yes. Excel. Just, that goes to show the anger of these youngsters coming up through the under-19 programs. Yes. But at the other hand, Justin Greaves didn't get as much runs that he'd want to get in Australia. Now coming to the regional cricket and really batting with a purpose for the Hurricanes. Look commanding so far. 24 from 43 deliveries but in a partnership earlier. With Carty. Was dismissed earlier by Ramon Lewis. Ramal Lewis so far picking up two wickets, Kimi. Yes. Getting his first game. Nice shot this time. Just came back. Full face of the bat being presented for another single to the Hurricanes total. And also to Justin Greaves. Run rate is still over four runs give me healthy run rate been maintained so far by the Leeward Highlands Hurricane always looking to be scoring always look business wise so far from his media's way to the wicket it's Joel Andrew 29 from 22 Kimi scoring over a runner ball yes and this partnership is consist of 39 runs this time is short Mansing and his back and this full face of the button presented down to long off this time to complete over number 33 with the hurricanes 155 for three No sunshine here at Sabina Park for this evening session, Kimi. This yeah. was what happened yesterday at this particular time. No signs of sun. And then Kimi. the rains just came down very heavy at Sabina Park. Let's hope, Kimi, no interruption today. <laughs> so far, so good. The only interruption they would want is some wicked interruption here from the Scorpions. Andrew is on 30. Greaves is on 25. 155 for 3. And the reason why I say Andrew is very demanding, when he came at the wicket, Justin Greaves was on 23. And now he surpassed Justin Greaves and he's on 30 from 23 deliveries. Yes. <laughs> a young so with a lot of confidence Kimi the Scorpions would want to break this partnership as quickly as possible getting out of hand 40 partnerships so far and 30 of those runs Kimi goes to Joel Anjo very talented young cricketer as I mentioned earlier Kimi did very well 
playing for the West Indies on the 19th. Loves to be on the counter attack, and so far he's doing just that for Leeward's Hurricanes at Spina Park. His fifth run action. Pete Summer will be coming from our commentary box in. So both off spinners for the Scorpions so far getting the ball to spin. Hence why they're still going with a leg slip. Yeah, so the game will start between the Barbados and Jamaica. Jamaica, they're bowling first. That's it. The women's T20 blaze. It's in the air. It will drop safely. They just come back for two. If you realize, Kimmy, if you look at the field for the Scorpions, there's two fielder on the offside. And on the onside, Kimmy, there's a, a man at short leg, there's a leg slip, Kimmy, there's a straight hit, there's mid wicket, there's long on. It's bold! A brilliant delivery from Pete Summon! And he gets his reward, his first of the innings, and my word, what a delivery to get rid of. Joel Angelis goes bold for 32. You can see here in the replay, that's just a straight delivery. Just played the wrong line there. Pete Someone gets his first wicket of the game. And a very important wicket to him as well. Very aggressive. Joel Angel. And as I had said that after lunch, we saw before lunch, Pete wasn't getting the line and length but after lunch that's a good comeback from him he picked up a wicket for 27 runs in his 11th over it is 157 for four and i will say a brilliant move by captain brandon king as well to get him back from this end and had rewards immediately in his 11th over one for 27 Yes, I we must commend Pete. If you look back from the first game until now, he has been bowling pretty well, getting wickets for his captain. And, and, and he can have a go with the bat as well. We saw where he got a wonderful 81 in the previous game against the West Indies Academy. And the new batter is Jamar Hamilton. Remember back in 2006, playing under 15 for Jamaica and actually played against Jamar Hamilton. Mm -hmm. He was the best wicket keeper of that tournament. That was the, the West Indies Clico under 15 tournament. That tournament was held in Antigua. That same ground that Brian Lara smashed the world record, Kimi. He's 75 and of course 400. When you talk about Brian Lara, he's one of the greatest human beings, Kimmy. <laughs> to actually hold cricket bat in his hands. Indeed. So they're just trailing by another 64 runs here. A destructive battle. Andrew, he's back in the dugout. He's gone for 30. Sent back by Pete. Well, of course, Jamar Hamilton is the second man from Angola to represent the West Indies in tests. Omari, Omari Banks was the first. But this one is clip fine. And they are back for the second. Good aggressive running between the wickets by the Hurricanes and Hamilton is off the mark with two. Yeah, and a decent over so far here from Pete. Took those four runs and a wicket from it. He's telling the captain what feel he wants now. Looking to pick up another before we head to T. Look at Jamar Hamilton, age of 33. Born on the 22nd of September, Kimi. 1990. So he's a 90s babies as well. <laughs> he's a youngster. Well, 
that's my age as well, Kimi. He's a few months older than me. Oh, really <laughs> now? Pete back in his groove that we know him. We know his. We know him for at the end of over number thirty-four. The score reads one hundred and fifty-nine for four. Casey Carty is gone for fifty-three. Paul is gone for forty-one. Andrew is gone for thirty-two. And Louis he's gone for a duck. So definitely a partnership is needed by the Hurricanes. Jamar, Jamar Neville Hamilton is at the wicket. This man single is going to continue. Of course, Jamar Hamilton made his international debut for West Indies back in August of 2019. Pleasant looking drive this time out to extra cover by Greaves. Leroy Log is in the way. Just another single. It's a man singing his fourth over. No made eight dots, 18 runs from it. Economy of 5.85. So Hamilton made his debut the 30th of August 2019 against India. Gap number was number 320. This one is swept fine by Hamilton. It goes down to the Deep backward square leg boundary for four more runs. This is the way how Hamilton plays. Partly that line delivered by Abhijay Mansing and easy pickings for Hamilton. He yeah. gets his first boundary. Bad line and he makes use of that and gets it away to the boundary. He's on six now from four deliveries. Mansing will have to just try and keep it off half and mid stump. Flight a delivery this time by Abhijay Mansing. And easily pushed down to long off for an easy single. So if you look at his first class career, Kimi, played over 100 games, Hamilton. 4,800. And 80 runs so far, Kimi. Mm -hmm. An average of 27.4. Another run added to the total takes the score to 166. With the Hurricanes, they trail by another 55 runs. They're going at a, a current run rate of 4.79. A healthy run rate has been maintained throughout by the Hurricanes so far. Hits him on the pad. Mansing goes up. But the finger stays down of the umpire. He said not out. I guess he indicated that it was drifting down the leg side. As you can see here in the replay, you're definitely heading down the leg side. Excellent decision once more by the umpire. And these two umpires so far doing a fantastic job in the middle, Kimmy. Yes. And that's the end of the 35th over. It is 166 for four. And it's drinks at Sabina Park.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park. Leeward Islands Hurricanes, 166 for four. They're responding to 221 all out posted by the Jamaica Scorpion. Andrew Shannon, your company alongside Penny, Marlon Pinnock, who's been enjoying himself this morning. With some good cricket here. Pete Salmon continues. And he's bowling to Justin Graves. He tugs this to wide along on to get the first run after the drinks break. And good afternoon to our viewers. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Chang. See some Batman coming in there. Justin Greaves. Getting that ball down to the whitish long on area. For the first run after the drinks break. Spine apart. Day two of this Western East Regional Championship game. Run five and Joe. Yes, indeed. Jamar Hamilton goes to the big hoik. Gets it down to Cole Corner. Does he get it in the gap? No, he doesn't. The fielder comes around and does quite well. Tumbling stop there by the big Leroy Lug. He lugged himself around the corner there. <laughs> and of course, it's good to see the big Leroy Lug running across the whole field. And as the suns come back out here at Spina Park, very hot. For a moment, we thought we we're going to get some showers. No, it's very hot here at Spina Park. Extremely hot indeed. Tamar Hamilton has come out and look absolutely positive. Leeward Hurricanes just trailed by 52 now. And this is how Hamilton plays, Andrew. What's ah, happening? This is how Hamilton plays. Likes to be on the counter attack. Getting the ball to spin. He speeds someone well bought. Half spinner so far. Getting spin out of this wicket. And hence why there's just two feelers on the offside. Ooh. Ooh. That one came back in harsh. Very, very sharp spin. Hamilton almost got himself in a tangle there. That's what I was saying, Andrew. Pete, someone getting the ball to spin into the right-handers. Didn't Jamar pick Amil that one at all, did he, Hamilton? Jamar Hamilton backing away, trying to create that space to hit the ball through the offside. And this is good strategy employed here by Captain Brandon King. In terms of the games around the region here, at the end of the over, 169 for four. The combined campuses and colleges have progressed to 187 for five in response to the West Indies Academy's score of 300. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, they're batting again and they're nine for one after the Barbados Pride folded for 279. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force posting 172 in their first innings. And the Guyana Harpy Eagles have progressed to 59 for one. This is after they posted 308 in their first innings and then Dismissed the Volcanoes of Windward Islands for 113. Mm. Well, here at Sabina Park. A disappointing end to the uh, enterprising innings by Jewel Andrew. He was outscoring Justin Greaves. Well, still has, if you consider that uh, <laughs> well, Greaves is still on 28 and Andrew made 32. Well, of course, it was in quick time as well. I think he hit two six and two fours as well. Yeah. And the counter attack was the youngster. But it was a beautiful delivery by Sam and that uh, pegged that uh, his off stump back. Unplayable as well. Oh, pleasant. Excellent work by Captain Brandon King there, Andrew. Typing away to his right to prevent uh, any chance whatsoever of a single. Yeah, he's been good in the field, Brandon King. Excellent fielder. Leading from the front as well. Justin Greaves so far doing what is required of him. Didn't have one of the best tours in Australia. He's hungry for runs in his regional.
as a cutaway this time. Uh, well, they think of two. Hamilton is always interested. And that's the way how he plays his cricket. Always aggressive. If he's batting, if he's keeping, he's just been an aggressive cricketer all around. Just nine minutes before two o'clock here in Kingston, Jamaica. Hurricane still trailed by uh, 51 runs. Flighted by Mansing. Still Rakeem Jimbo Cornwall. Still Tabat, captain of this Leeward Island Hurricane as well. And we know how dangerous he can be, Andrew. Oh, yes. That's a bit of width there. Does Hamilton tries to punch out through the extra cover region? There's no run. Ends the over 170 for four. The bowling by RBG Manting hasn't had any luck in terms of wickets as yet but he and Salmon have really bowled excellently Ramal Lewis before lunch well Ramal before lunch Ramal Lewis was very da very dangerous every delivery sent down was like a hand grenade ready to explode on the batter <laughs> um, it was all out war from Ramal Lewis um, since lunch Pete Salmon has really settled into a groove here uh, RBJ Manzing as well a little bit e expensive but that's what uh, that's what happened when a young Jewel Andrew was counter-attacking. But one for 32 of 12 overs. That is really, really good going by Pete Salmon. But with that, that almost dribbles back on the stumps there. Justin Cruz, a tall fellow, he uses his height, he uses those uh, long levers, as they like to say, and those even longer legs to stretch out. Turned around the corner and he gets that past that leg slip. That will run very, very close to the road. Blackwood is very fast across the ground and he gets there very, very quickly indeed. Blackwood could go on a run in the champ sports at the uh, National Stadium going on right now. A short fellow, he's very, very quick. He's very quick, he's German Blackwood. Covers grown very quickly as, he, as you can see there, Andrew. Delicately played by Greaves. It's always dangerous to, to try to turn it around the corner. He yeah, played his soft hands. Tries again. Oh, did this one go to hand? I think it did. Just dropping short of Captain Brandon King. I would like to see this on the replay. Yeah, just, just short. Just I think if he had stayed a little bit lower... I think he needs to keep crouching like how the short leg is. Yeah, he is just crouching. came up. Yeah. If he had stayed down, maybe yeah. he'd stand a chance of taking that catch. Pleasant looking drive down to Long Island this time by Greaves for his 32nd run. Yeah, been a good inning by Justin Greaves. He's not been untroubled, but he's uh, put it behind him and uh, has got along with the job. Goes to the big sweep shot, does uh, Jamar Hamilton. And it actually hits the field at short leg. And I think uh, the umpire is signaling dead ball because I think that was a vicious strike on Carlos Brown. And the physio is being called out immediately. He swept that ball pretty hard, the Andrew. Seemed to hit him on top of the shin pad on his knees. Oh dear. I should say his knee. That's a, that's a cracking blow. We'll have a look at the replay here again. I think Carlos Brown would be in some discomfort after that one. He 
18 with the spin as well. As the sun's come out very hot here at Sabina Park. Very, very hot. There was a full blooded sweep from Jamar Hamilton that went straight into Carlos Brown. Uh, I think he's up on his feet now. And that is good to see. Getting a pat on the back from Brandon King and a dust off of the back as well. Well, Carlos Brown certainly is a tough fellow because I think that's the second time in the innings he's been struck. Um, I think it was a shot straight to his chest as well. Really a tough character is Carlos Brown. He is from the parish of St. Catherine. That's a parish in love, Andrew. Yes, indeed, Penny. There's some great players from St. Catherine as well. You're supposed to know at least two or three of them, Andrew. Andre Russell, Ralph Manpoel. The great Tamar Lambert, who kept in Jamaica for a number of years at regional level. Odin. It was a dead ball signal by the Empire, but the batsman still did cross, so that uh, remains. Greaves will be on strike now, one delivery left in the over. One seventy three for four is the accurate score. School still scoring two for four and a half runs so far. The Hurricanes. Top scorer so far. Carty who made fifty three. Kieran Pauli made forty one. The youngster Andrew was very aggressive. He made thirty two. Was on the counter attack. Took a brilliant delivery from Pete Summon. Knock his off stump out of the ground as well. So far, Pete Summon won for 36 from 13, 13 over. Happy J. Manson will be continuing. That's it. Approach. Two o'clock here in Kingston, Jamaica. Just a minute away from two o'clock here, Andrew. Yep. And so far, the Hurricanes maintain a healthy scoring read so far. Pleasant looking drive this time to a widish long off. They cross a one. They're thinking about the, a second, but excellent feeling by that big fast bowler in OJ Shields. And it's been appreciated by his teammates as well. And limits the batter to just a single, Andrew. Yeah, good single there from uh, Hamilton. Since the wicket of Carty, Justin Greaves. Just been on the slow side of things. Just spending time at the wicket. It's very crucial and he's doing those that for the Hurricanes. Pleasant looking on drive this time down to the long on. The Hurricanes have managed to stitch together some partnerships. Of course, the first wicket falling without the score, without any runs on the board. And then Powell and Carty came together and did quite well. And then it was uh, Carty and Greaves. And then, of course, Greaves and uh, Andrew making some runs there. But the only partnership, I mean, 
will the partnership of note really for the Jamaicans was uh, that of between Carlos Brown and Romy Morris. There's a quick signal, there's a chance for a run out. Ooh. Had he hit, that might have been very close there. Good work coming in from Captain Brandon King. As you can see here on the replay, was quick to react because Brandon King had the throw hit the stump. It would have been mighty close. 177 for four. Hurricane still third here on the second day of this West Indies Regional Championship by 44 runs. As you can see, some youngsters, St. George's, just hanging out and watching some lovely cricket here at Sabina Park. And why not? On a Thursday afternoon after school, Andrew, you can see the schoolers coming in, in their numbers to support the Scorpions. And boy, oh boy, do the Scorpion need support here at Sabina Park? Shot of the plane in the distance, probably heading to Norman Manley International Airport or coming back. Goes to the big sweep shot across the line is Jamar Hamilton. Again, Carlos Brown has to stop it with his body. Have a look at the replay on this one. So he's going he, yeah, he definitely stepped outside the line of off stump on that occasion. Easy decision for the umpire as well. Goes for the hoik again. Misses this time. He's bowled. Oh, he's that. No, I think it's a court behind. I don't think the stumps are disturbed. Yes, he's bowled. I tell you what. Let's see on the replay here. Not see. Yeah, I think it is. He's bold. bold. Yeah, it is bold indeed. Pete Salmon strikes again. Jamar Hamilton goes, uh, but not a good advice. Not a well advised shot by Hamilton, but he has to go either way. So I think about nine. It's a poor judge shot there from the wicketkeeper Jamar Hamilton. This is not what you expect at this level. Justin Greaves there on 33, batting very well. Jamar Hamilton just came to the wicket. And it's been positive and that leads to his demise. The Hurricanes won 7-7 for the loss of five here at Savannah Park. Good delivery from uh, Pete Salmon. There's two wickets have been bowled as Jeremiah Louie, it looks like, is coming out to the bat as opposed to the big man, Rakim Cornwall. Well, Jeremiah Louie did a fantastic job with the ball for the Hurricanes. Now he's turn with the bat. And definitely a partnership is needed for the Hurricanes as well. Still trailed by further 44 runs with five wickets in hand. Yeah, they're not far away from uh, from the Scorpions total and that's the, that's the concern here for the Scorpions. I mean, if they had put on close to 300 and you could say 177 for five there on is even. I think the uh, Hurricanes still have a little bit of advantage, but other than the early partnerships, uh, Scorpions have taken wickets at regular intervals. And the change of ends working for Pete Salmon as well. I think his two wickets are from this, the Courtney Walsh end. Yeah, good captaincy from King. A valid point, Penny, that uh, Salmon actually started on the southern end of the ground, switched and uh, on two wickets, but he has been economical from both ends, must be said, for the young spinner. I wouldn't see so much of a young spinner. I wouldn't see so much of a young spinner. Indeed. 
in his 30s now beat someone been around for a very long time always playing cricket always performing both with bat and with ball back oh just getting that past the short leg fielder well 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 Jeremiah Louis you're playing with danger there you're playing with fire and the salmon will swim right over you all right let's look at the replay here trust to the left of the diving Carlos Brown would have been brilliant if he took it it would have been Pete someone causing a lot of problems here after this lunch break here at Spina Park well negotiated to complete over number 40 at 177 for the loss of five it's day two here and it's just about 33 minutes before the tea break and of course Marlon Pinnock the thing to consider is that uh, the Hurricanes have to battle last on this pitch and if Salmon is doing this on the second day and of course Ramal Lewis who bowled brilliantly uh, first up so, so the, 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 the Hurricanes will know that they need to bat at least for another half a day tomorrow. Get the lead up over 100 mark. The Scorpion batting. They see haven't been at their best so far in this line of Carlos Brown. is outstanding so far. Lovely Keep exhibition up. of driving by Justin Greaves, but uh, not piercing that that decent figure, Brandon King there, in that uh, extra cover position, an excellent fielder. A good arc of fielders as well. This time, an excellent stop there by uh, Carlos Brown, who's at short mid-off. I was just going to say, so there's a short mid-off, a long off, as well as that field at, at extra cover. So it's, he's enticing that drive and uh, Greaves is hitting his marks. He just hasn't pierced the field yet. Will he look to go over? No, he plays defensively this time on good, this occasion. Good little period so far by the Scorpions. They came back, picked up some vital wickets and in quick time as well. Partnership was building between, of course, Reeves and Carthy. Who oh, deep into his crease, tugs that through mid wicket. That's a lovely fall by Justin Greaves. A rare bad delivery here coming from Abiji Mansing. Short begging to be hit, and easy pickings for Justin Greaves. A welcome boundary for him as well. He's up to 37, and the Hurricanes up to 181. For the loss of five here at Sabina Park. Yeah, of course, I think uh, whatever happens, wh whatever score the Leeward Islands get to, will be very heavily dependent on Justin Greaves. Um, and of course, his first target will be getting to 200 and then getting to 222. Pleasant. Up the wicket, up to long off this time for another single to complete the 41st at 182 for the loss of five Beat someone into his 15th over now. Ramalou is 2 wicket for 50 runs as well. 
now beat someone 2 for 36 Derval Green one wicket as well he picked up the first wicket of the innings Ooh. well turned again by Justin Green they're pushing for two and they'll get it quite comfortably here Scorpions are slucking off a, there. It's a delicate dab by Greaves, and the ball stopped about three quarters away to the boundaries. The feeler had to run a good distance there at OJ Shields. Moves out to 40, this Greaves, a really good fighting 40 from him. And again, that turn. And will they push for two again? They will. They should get two quite comfortably indeed. He's exploiting that gap. Yes, there is a leg slip, and yes, there is a short leg. But if you get it in that gap, you're getting a good purchase for your runs. And, and the sort of angle that Salmon is bowling, especially if he drifts too straight, Penny, it's just easy pickings for Greaves. This has to get out a little bit wider of off stump, I think. Still trailed by 35 runs, the Hurricanes. A bit better, well fielded, brilliant stuff there. Excellent work. That's a man, Rama Lewis. He slid across the turf like an ice skater there. <laughs> he was very quick across the ground. And a pirouette as well to get the ball up. This is a commitment you want from your fielders, Andrew. Yeah, and it's the sort of thing that raises your spirits as well as a fielding team when you it's hot and draining out there at Sabina Park. Your team is up against it. And getting his first game of the season as well. Making a mark is Ramo Lewis. It's not easy to face down a hurricane at all, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. This gets close to 2.15 here in Jamaica. Another 25 minutes before the tea break interval and the second day of this West Indies Regional round for action from Spina Park. Down the leg side. Again, a little bit too straight from Salmon. He has to think of, of that delivery that he bowled to Jamar Hamilton that had him in a, in a twist and a tune, even before he was bowled. That's better. That's where he wants to be, I would think. 186 for five. Hurricanes maintaining a good run rate so far. Over four throughout this inning so far, Andrew. Hence why they are scoring at a rapid rate at 186 for 5. That's a shot of the beautiful clouds here at Spina Park. No chat of any showers today, yesterday. At this time, this is when the rain came at Spina Park. Had a delayed for two and a half hours yesterday just started back 5.15 yesterday evening and just got in I think it was a hoover and couple of deliveries then the umpires of the forest and end to the day a wet out field Archibald Lanbada that's long off area it's good to see Rama Lewis back into the attack. Two off spinners operating. Just 25 minutes before the tea break here, Andrew. Yeah, I feel I feel that uh, before lunch he allowed the ball. He was bowling slower, and just allowed the ball to drift and bounce and grip. After lunch he's been bowling a little bit flatter and faster. Of course, the ball has gotten a little bit older. But if you're not allowing the ball, if as a spinner you're not allowing the ball to do what what it can do in terms of that bounce and spin and grip, and if you don't know what the ball is going to do, then it's even better. 
Because if you don't know what the ball is going to do, then the batsman surely isn't. Oh, beautiful, beautiful one there. And I think uh, Rowan Morris had to weigh that one on his chest there because it got that little bit of extra bounce. Well, first time in this innings you've seen Rama Lewis coming in from the Michael Lowell and then and immediately getting bounced, getting turned as well. Goes for the sweep. Just gets it past that field leg slip. It's Brandon King who was sprawling. Rama Lewis, every time he comes on, it's just always something a little bit different here. Yeah, just handling down the leg side. But I getting the ball to... The pad. It might have been an under edge onto the pad. Always asking questions is Ramal Lewis. Yeah. And both off spinners for the Scorpions. Doing a tremendous job so far. Shot off that helicopter there. I should say a plane. Hurricanes require 31 more runs. I should say third by 31. Really no sunshine here at Spina Park. A quick single, there's a chance. From there at Midoff seem to be OJ Shields. They are two for a single to complete over number 43 at 191 for loss of five. Yeah, closing in on that 200 mark are the uh, Leeward Island Hurricanes. the Leeward Island Hurricane D with no further loss. Uh, yeah, uh, with uh, just about, it's looking at just about 22 minutes before the tea break. I uh, If they go through without any loss, I would think they'll be very, very close to Jamaica's total, if not having surpassed it. Well, of course, it would be a plus for them as well. Inches in a run, Greaves was halfway down the pitch, but it was sent back. But if you realize the field here set by Captain Brandon King, there's no man in the cover. Pete someone getting the ball to spin into the right-hander, so definitely he's trying to force that drive and get him ball through his gate. So this is good strategy employed here by Brandon King. Yeah, and of course, uh, it'd be interesting to see how Louis matches up against Salmon here. Greaves handled him, handled him pretty okay, although there were some uh, half chances as well. So a really, really good battle between bat and ball here, with Salmon and Lewis doing really well. The fielder goes out to deep mid-wicket. That's Leroy Lowe going out. Sensible cricket from Louis here. Yes, indeed. Not allowing Pete someone to force him to go for that big booming drive. Hence why he's just covering up. Back and tunes this one around the corner. He's got a single here. Very adept at that, and credit to the Hurricane Batters for doing that. I think it's a dangerous ploy. I mean, obviously, you have to go with the spin, so they're playing with the spin. And of course, it's good cricket by the Hurricanes as well. Yeah. See the previous. Over. But I, I, considering what what Salmon is doing, you think you can try another fielder there, maybe a, a short square leg, something like that, just to get, just to make sure that they know, hey, you can't you can't just turn it around the corner for an easy single. This is excellent cricket from Greaves. That's a good punch down the ground just for that single. The safe shot. Yeah, so far Greaves have been shown that he's a class of player. 
sure why he was selected as an all-rounder to represent the West Indies down under in Australia. Every time he comes down the wicket, he looks very good. That one is through everybody. And that will run onto the ropes of four. And it's leg buys from the umpire. And that's another four to end the over. 197 for five. But that fielder there, Penny, that fielder who's uh, three quarters of the way back to the boundary at the backward square leg. Um, if you bring him up to a short square leg position, you'll have the chance of, of, of maybe taking the catch and preventing the single as well. Because all that fielder is ho hoping to do is prevent, is, is allow the single but no boundary. And that's that's all he's doing there. He's not in a catching position. He's not in a, he's sort of in no man's land, I would say, really and truly. Indeed. And that's a heavy, heavy patrol lever so far for your Hurricanes. Getting a lot of singles there as well. So Ramalus will be continuing to Justin Greaves. Turns this one into mid wicket. A lot of acreage there. So far, Justin Greaves looked very good at the wicket for the Hurricanes. Very Shot of the easy. Kingston Harbour in the distance there, Penny, where he goes swimming every morning. So by Port Royal Road as well. Wonderful country is it in Jamaica. Hurricanes closing in on 200 yards by the park. Just two runs away. Another fielder comes into the leg side, so a fielder goes around from mid wicket and has a short mid on in position now. Flicked. And uh, no run there for Louis. Beautiful Pop. delivery to end the 45th over, 199 for five. Quiet period so far for both teams. Beautiful shot, it's a lovely country in Jamaica. Jeremiah 
Louis age of 28 born the 12th of March 1996 first class career 54 matches in the 17th over now Pete Salmon been a marathon spell from the spinner done really really well Trailed by just 22, the Leeward Islands. Another 14 minutes before T. Someone continues to play all the way here at Spina Park. NCF 2 for 42 so far into his 17th. Again, turned around the corner, this time by Louis. And that's a 200 up for the Hurricanes as well. So they're just 20 run, runs behind the Jamaicans. And if you look, Anjo. It's a high score in the areas for the Hurricanes just behind square. Haven't seen Brandon King trying to pluck that gap. Been easy for the Hurricanes at that square leg region. Single to Justin Greaves is 46th run. 201 for loss of five yards by in a park. Just tell just 12 minutes away from the tea break interval. The Hurricanes trail by 20 runs here at Spina Park. Caught! Is he caught? Yes it is! So Pete someone gets his third wicket. And a very important wicket as well of Jeremiah Louis. He goes caught at leg slip. That's the captain, Brandon King. As you can see here in the replay here, getting the ball to spin. And hence why the leg slip was in place. And hence why he took a wonderful catch is Brandon King. And the sixth wicket goes down for the Hurricanes. And he's still trailed by 20 runs here at Savannah Park. Excellent bowling by Pete Simon. And it's the big man, Rakim Cornwall, who's coming out. Wicked at a, a very good time here for the Jamaicans. Um, because certainly we're just 20 runs behind the Hurricanes. This is the opportunity for Rakim Cornwall to do what Cornwall does best. And of course, we know how dangerous he can be. Shown in the white ball version. Open the bat in, in the white ball Virgin though, aren't you? Yeah, no, if he stays for at least an hour, I believe he'll be erased in no time at all. Of course, 86 first class game, scoring over 3,096 runs at an average of 22.8. We certainly need more than 20 something from uh, Cornwall today. Indeed. Big fella though, Andrew. Third wicket for Pete Salmon, three for 44. He's uh, really taken control of the middle order. First it was Jewel Andrew was bowled, and then Salmon was, and then Hamilton bowled as well. Just got rid of a Jeremiah Louis. Gives Cornwall with, and Cornwall slaps it away into the uh, extra cover region. But there was an acreage of space 
we had gotten that anywhere squared, I would have gone for four. Rakim Rashan Shane Cornwall. End of the over, 201 for six. Rakim Cornwall, 31 years of age. Cornwall played 10 tests for the West Indies, Andrew. Just scoring 261 runs at an average of 18.6, including an half century as well. And of course, we know how destructive Rakim Connell can be. Rama Lewis continuing. Justin Greaves is still there. Came in at uh, number four. And. Uh, building the innings and keeping it together as best as it can. Pushes this one straight. You'll get a single here. Cornwall will make his way down to the striker's end. But of Lumbers course. down indeed. <laughs> but of course, anyway on the field, you are in Cornwall, hit that ball to you have to be thrown at his end. I don't think I've ever actually seen uh, Cornwall at a full run. I think it's always been like a, at least a trot at most. The last time I see Rocky Cornwall run out, <laughs> it was a game. I think Barbados, it was CPL, Caribbean Premier League. This one is pulled behind square. Excellent work at the deep backward square leg boundary. By Abby J. Mansing, that ball got to him very quickly, Andrew. Yeah, indeed. So he's off the mark, is Rakeem Cornwall. Rakeem still chilled by 18 runs here at Sabina Park. Just about seven minutes before the tea break on the second day. Don't, not to take anything away from Rakeem Cornwall. Justin Greaves playing a fantastic innings for the Hurricane so far. Well, of course, normally we'll see aggressive running between the wickets. Now it's just like a humble through for an easy single. Yeah, well, Rakim Cornwall isn't going to steal a quick single at all. <laughs> and uh, get awareness from Justin Greaves. Do that. I always wonder how Rakim Cornwall can get bowled. As he blocks the entire wicket with just one leg. Well, of course, the easiest way to get him out is leg before. Indeed. <laughs> but he likes to smash the ball all parts of the cricket ground as well. It's actually amazing how small and tiny that bat looks in his hand. <laughs> well, it's probably quite a heavy bat indeed as well. Poor and poor overthrows there means that Rakim Cornwall gets a four without even hitting the ball to the boundary. And this is poor bucking up here by Derval Green. Yeah. Sloppy Very cricket there from Jamaica. Very poor. And the last thing they need to do is give away runs because the Hurricanes are very, very close to their total. I think that is the end of the over. No, it, it isn't. It, it is indeed. It is indeed, yeah. 208 or 209 for six, it should be. So Five runs there. I think it's trailed by 13 runs now, Andrew. Should be, yes, it is. Look at the bowling figures so far for the Scorpions. Speed someone three for 44. And Rama Lewis win his first game. Probably walking late with walking with their igloo, probably full of food and drink. Maybe a bit of refreshment. For some of the spectators in the Nordstone as well. Good start with the big man. Just five minutes before the tea break. It's a really big man, though, Hanjo. 
Yep. And when he hits this cricket ball, it stays hit. Realize two one out on the leg side as well. Deep back with square leg and mid wicket. Oh, straight through him. Appeal for court. Well, well, well. That is a beautiful delivery there from Pete Salmon. Let's see what. Ha let's have a look at this one again. Going down the leg side, spinning down the leg side. Excellent call there by the umpire. Pete Salmon getting the ball to spin, spin very sharp to the right handers. Goes this time he's looking the this front. Time across the line. How does the umpire not give that one? Maybe he got a bit of an inside edge onto that one. Might be going down leg again as well. Mm, that if it didn't got any inside edge on that, that is very close. On the back leg there, Andrew. Benefit of the goal goes to the batter as well. Come on, we're playing with fire. Turn this one nicely into the third man region. And we'll lumber up the pitch for a single. And of course the th the fielders will all be throwing to the end that Cornwall is going to Penny. And at his pace. But I don't think he's had that many run outs in his career, which is credit to him as well. <laughs> well the batters batting with Cornwall would know what to run from what not to run. Have to be a clear single. And not much twos as well. Dealing in bounces are single. <laughs> well, just three minutes before T here on day two of this West Indies Regional Championship Round 5 action from Spina Park in Kingston, Jamaica. And the completion of the 48 to 1 0 for the loss of six. Your thoughts on the entire performance of the Hurricane so far, Andrew? Yeah, indeed, been a solid performance. Been a solid performance by the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. Jamaica Scorpions have taken wickets regularly after the uh, opening salvo from Powell and Carty. Of course, they got rid of Louis, with a, who didn't trouble the scorers at all. Powell and Carty, that 70-run partnership, really sort of built a, a platform on which the Leewards could launch. Okay, and they just trailed by 11 here. Good timing there by Cornwall. That's a single. Final over before the tea break here at Spina Park. The Hurricanes trail by 10 runs with four wickets in hand. A little bit uppishly. Uh, Greaves hit it too well. Doesn't get a run for it. I think bowling to Cornwall must be a, a good challenge for any any bowler. Because you know what he's capable of. You know how hard he can hit the ball. Yes. But, I mean, in terms of his size as well um, and, the, and his reach. And then, of course, his power. So a short delivery that, that would uh, trouble another batter. But just be about Cornwall's midriff. Sharp turn there from Lewis and sharp bounce as well. Yeah, he's definitely getting the ball to spin. And hence why there's a leg slip still maintained there by Captain Brandon King. I think Greaves is a little bit itchy to get his 50 before the tea break, but he has to remember, of course, there's a whole session to play after. Just needs to calm himself, see out these next three deliveries. Pushing a driver this one. Cornwall have to hustle. No, he doesn't because the field had to tumble to make the stop. Well, of course, it's the longest session of the day, the main of the tea. Yeah, it's been a mixed session. I would say it's about honours even uh, in terms of this session. The Lee 
Windward Islands did get a, a quite a few runs. I think they got to 100 plus runs, at least 130, 140 or so. And the Jamaicans taking up four wickets. The big wicket of Kesey Carty for 53. And then the important wicket of Jewel Andrew for 32. Final delivery coming up before T, D2. And he's back to in this one, is it the mid wicket? And he'll get a single there. Is that his 50? It is indeed. So he does get his 50 with the last delivery, I think, before the tea break. Yes, indeed. The umpire knocks the stumps off. And they go for T on day two at 214 for six.
Oh, well, but come back to the Western East Regional Championship Round 5 action from Sabina Park. It's, of course, the Scorpions up against the Hurricane here at Sabina Park. So we're back after the tea break with the Hurricanes 2-14 for the loss of 6. Justin Grieve just before the tea break bringing up yet another half century in regional cricket. And at the known striker's end is Captain Rakim Cornwall. Just uh, came to the wicket. The dismissal of Jeremiah Louis. Just before the key break sees Rakim Cornwall at the wicket. And we know how dangerous Rakim Cornwall can be. But at the moment, Pete Someone will be continuing from our commentary box. And as you say, special good afternoon to Miss Kimberly Forbes. Good afternoon to you, Pinot. Well, we're in the final session of the day. The sun is back. In all its glory here. Pete is bowling exceptionally well after lunch. Yes, so far, Pete, someone getting into his work after lunch, as I mentioned, Kimmy. And hence why you have figures of 3 for 46 so far. Not to left out Ramon Lewis. Playing his first game of the season for the Scorpions. And so far, picking up two wickets as well. Yeah. And he's in his 19th over this, that speed. Greaves have been impatient at the crease he's on 51 from 86 the hurricanes then just trail by another six runs well cornwall is back this time under steering this one down to the third man region speed gun of german blackwood can't prevent the single though <laughs> so cornwall gets his first run after break here at Spina Park as you mentioned Kimmy the sun is out in its glory at Spina Park this final session of day two Greaves continues to take command of this middle order for the Hurricanes it's been around 87 deliveries now anchored the middle order for the Hurricanes yeah, and the women's T20 Blaze, the Jamaica women, they bowled out Barbados for 65 runs. And they're replying now, they're at six without loss with William, Rashada Williams and Natasha McLean at the crease. The scoreboard here, that's, this is what's happening here at the end of over number 50. The Liberated Hurricanes, they're at 216 for six. Well, the, the spinners, they have been going for quite some time now here, pin up, but they, they are really giving the captain what he asks for some wickets. They picked up six wickets so far. They want to get them out to avoid them from setting a, a total for them to go in and bat. But of course, OJ Shields is back for his second spell. And he will be rolling to Rakim Cornwall. The Hurricanes would want to have a healthy lead here at Spina Park, knowing that they are going to bat last mm -hmm. on this wicket here at Spina Park. This four day pitch won't be easy at Spina Park on this four day wicket. Let's see the battle between Big Rakim Cornwall and, of course, OJ Shields, who so far in this Western East Regional Championship has been bowling pretty fast, having, uh, if not all, most butters, Kimmy, in all sorts of butter here at Sabina Park. Yeah, we saw him starting from the court and watch and here today, but throughout the season, we have watched him from the Michael Holden end, and I think he's very comfortable bowling from that end.
but of course Kimi do you think is the best ploy here by Captain Brandon King to carry back OJ Shields to Rakim Cornwall yes I think so because I think Cornwall he's good at playing spin and Shields with who has been so quick maybe he can try and get Rakim to play that shot um, that delivery that he likes the ball shot have him to pull and get a top edge well I think Rakim Cornwall plays both spin and pace very well but to me Kimi I don't know if I'm wrong I think he plays fast bowling better than spin but that's my opinion yes yes and you know how dangerous he can be against fast bowling. We saw that over the years mm -hmm. in the white ball format in CPL. But you saw his intention with that one. The minute he pulled that one, you could hear the captain says catch to Pete, but drop short of him. Cat to say catch him. time which he shields a strain on the line of the leg stump excellent work behind the stump by Morris good wicket keeper batsman is Morris I just want to see Morris settle down Kimi and bat for long periods as he's getting starts but he's just not capitalizing and hence why in this innings he made 42 and then gave his wicket away but so far so good for Justin Greaves 51 from 90 deliveries A special knock this one is clipped nicely out to the man at the, the backward square who will have to move 15 meters in front of square can't prevent another single so if you look at the scorpions the bowling attack Kimi you see where they are short of a fast bowler mm -hmm. and hence why the spinners have to be bowling that much overs in the games yes. the last two games here at Spina Park well and they're and the spinners they really they they have done well throughout the spells that they have been bowling or have bowled Field. It's a misfield here coming in from Derval Green at backward point, allowing Rakim Cornwall to pick up to pick up his twelfth run. And it, you, you don't want your feelers to be that loose in the field when they are almost behind the eight ball in the second day of a four day encounter of Sabina Park. Carval Green, the culprit here on this occasion as the Hurricanes trail by two runs here at Spina Park. OJ Shield so far, none for 25, Kimi. Justin Greaves is very easy in the eye to complete the 51st at 219 for the loss of six. Seems like the physiotherapy of the Leeward Islands Hurricane is out on the field did not see him on, see her on cameras yet <laughs> Justin Greaves having an issue here yes, seems seems like seems to be having a little discomfort there indeed but it well so far 52 from 92 deliveries 219 for 6 the only trail by 2 runs now at the end of the 51st over, 51 overs gone. Pete is going to continue. Pete didn't start off well this morning, but after lunch, he really, really come back, bowling his line and length and picking up three wickets for 47 runs and in his 19th over. And so far, so good for Pete Summon. All five runs so far. 
has been performing for the Scorpions, both with bat and with ball. You can see the physiotherapy getting some work done. Justin Greaves left hand. So we are set and ready to go. Racking Cornwall will be on strike. And of course, from Pete, someone whose figures of 3 for 47 so far speaks for itself from 19 overs. So give me a further 28 overs remaining in the day's play. The Hurricanes will want to have a significant lead entering the third day here at Sabina Park. Indeed. And if Kimi, if you take a look on the field here for Rakim Cornwall on the leg side, there's a straightish mid wicket, Kimi. There's a leg slip, there's a short leg, there's a deep backward square, and there's a mid wicket as well. It's loud appeal, wrapped in the pad. It's given! So a fourth wicket for Pete Summon. And Rakim Cornwall goes leg before. And Pete Summon is on a roll here at Spina Park. As the seventh wicket goes down with the score on 2 1 9 for the loss of seven. Good decision, perfectly by the umpire in. Yeah, it was really quick from him because he wa his intention was to go over the top. But that was indeed a good delivery from Pete. Picked up four wickets now for 47. And the dangerous, the destructive man, how destructive he can be. The Scorpions will be happy with that wicket. He's gone. You can see the disappointment on his face. But I'm just checking here. So far, Ke uh, Pete has picked up more than 10 wickets already. If I should add this four, that makes it 14 so far here. Pin up. So far, Pete is doing a wonderful job. Good decision here by Umpire Gusted. Easy decision as well. Hitting across the line. This big Rakim Cornwall. And he perish. Pete, someone picks up his fourth for 47 runs. The leading wicket taker so far for the Scorpions is Pete, someone. Someone 20 wickets so far to his name in this year's regional competition for 2024. It's been doing both with bat and ball, as I mentioned earlier. The hurricane still chilled by two runs, Kimmy. Woo! pitch and spun away from the left-hander and I like the feel here by Brandon King with two slip in place and now a slight adjustment this is excellent captaincy as well by Brandon King hats off to him Kimi yeah he's reading the game pretty well beaten once more flirting with danger calling Archibald outside the off stump So his turn out to deep square. Excellent work coming off. Deep backward square like Bonji. Kurt McKenzie prevent any chance of a second run. So the Scorpions putting the Hurricanes under a lot of pressure here at Spina Park. And the Scorpions did one to get these remaining three wickets for as less runs as possible. And this wrap in the pad! By Augustus, not interested this time, just pitching outside the off some Excellent call. Yes, and, uh, and that's the end of the over. 52 overs being bowled here. Pete picked up his fourth wicket in this over. Just a run from it. And it's, the score is 220 for seven. 
current run rate is at 4.23. Justin Green still hanging around. He's on 52 from 93. Colin Archibald, who's the new button at this crease, he's on one from three. They just trailed by another one run. And, and I think the captain will be happy with this, knowing that seven wickets is down already. And the, the Leeward Island won't have a big lead. Top batters are back in the dugout. But of course, you have a well set batter as well, Kimmy. Yeah. It's not over until it's over. Right. Justin Greaves look very good at the wicket. Just need a partnership. Yeah, but I'm thinking that King is going to say, if we can't get Greaves, let's get the, the rest of the batters around him. Definitely, Kimmy. Absolutely correct. Spot on. And the good thing about it for the Scorpions. Rama Lewis is bowling from the Michael Olin end. And he has figures of 2 for 71 so far. So 6 wicket between these two. It's a chance for a run out. Terrible Green was slow to react at square leg and hence there's another single that means the scores are level here at Spina Park it's like nil nil in football Kimmy <laughs> nil nil here at Spina Park perfect way to say it here at Pinnock so the leewards they will have to start over now and, I and I'm sure they want to set at least a hundred runs leading runs for the Scorpions but the Scorpions want the remaining three quickly every run from here on is vital for the Hurricanes as well standout performer so far Casey Carty getting a half century Justin Grieve as well So, of course, the Hurricanes now lead by a single, Kimmy. Yeah. And Ramon Lewis in his 15th over picked up two wickets 70 for, for 73 runs. Spinner's really doing the job here for the Scorpions. Yes, indeed. Picked up two follow-up wickets for the Scorpions earlier today yes and of course he should be credited as well a load appeal this time it's his given so Rama Lewis picks up his third and the Scorpions are fighting back here and Spina Park on day two. Archibald goes leg before to Ramon Lewis. He goes for two. Yes, after and looking back at the replay here, uh, quick. Well, he tried to pad that one outside of the off stump, given. And the eighth wicket is down. After the Hurricanes, they started with a bang this morning. And then Rama Lewis was introducing the attack. And he's got uh, the wicket of Powell and Ka uh, Carty. I know the Scorpions, they are in control of the game. Eight wickets down, even though the, the Leeward Islands, they had a one-run lead here. Credit is is due to the bowlers of the Scorpions. Indeed, Kimmy, you're absolutely correct. Even Steve's here at Sabina Park. Game is wide open, Kimmy. And of course, the Scorpions won't want them to get away. They want to reduce them to as low a lead as possible here at Sabina Park. Excellent bowling from Rama Lewis and Pete Summon. Seven wickets between the twin spins for yep. the scorpions yep and just two runs coming from that over of roman lewis and the wicket 
and Pete is hunting for a five wicket haul here four wickets down for him already and why not it's dear for the taking Kimi why not take it <laughs> so far he's doing well They realize there's a spread field now. They are not afraid to give Justin Greaves a single. They want to bowl at the The batter seem to be the ram at the wicket. They want to bowl at him. They are acres of space in the field by Brandon King. They are happy to give him a single <laughs> gimme. Yes. So the Jamaica women, they just need another 37 runs to win. Williams and McLean at the crease. I would know McLean can be very destructive in this form of the game. A matter of fact, McLean plays each game as if it's a 320 competition <laughs> <laughs> it seems as if she's gone she's sent back to the dugout she's gone for 13 wow after hitting two fours in that over pleasant looking drive this time down to long on for an easy single springs to ramming strike the lead is just two so the Scorpions would be happy to the way how things have gone on day two for them, Kimmy. Yes. Spinners really put up their hands for the Scorpions today. They don't want to ping point anyone. Both spinners of the Scorpions done a fantastic job. And either of them would want to register a five rigged all. <laughs> but Pete, someone is closer than, <laughs> than Lewis. And Lewis at the moment. But Rama Lewis would be saying to himself, I'm playing my first game of the season. Well, he's showing the captain that he really deserves a spot in the squad. Of course, that's a completion of the 54th at 228, 223 for the loss of 8. Yes, yeah, so they just have a lead of two runs, and there's a fall of wicket. The first wicket for no runs, second wicket 72. The bowlers, I must commend them. They haven't given away a lot of extras. We saw where they bowl a few bad lines and been punished, but they really, really had a comeback, especially Pete Summon. Ramal Lewis having a game, enjoying his game here. Picked having a game of his life. Already. Yeah, picked up three wickets already from 15 overs. Just a sedate session after tea here, Kimmy. So you realize squeeze is on strike, Kimmy. Fields tends to open. So five feelers on the boundary for Justin Greaves at the moment. Deep backward square, deep mid wicket, long on, long off. And the backward point all on the boundary. Uh, and and you well, I think you'll have noticed that you know. I'm not sure he's going to go for the big shot, knowing that eight wicket is down. He'll try to work it around and pick up those ones and twos. But a lot of time is left on the two. Train on the line of leg stump. This time by Rama Lewis. 
really hunting a five wicket all in his first game of the season and that would be a plus for him mm -hmm. oh <laughs> i would want to see a poor work there by Ramon Lewis <laughs> but maybe it's a strategist Kimi yeah. <laughs> to bowl at Adoram maybe maybe not yeah me, yeah possible to get him on strike because since as if he's seems as if he's the new batter yet to get off the mark you see he, the field comes in for for Daniel yeah, Daniel Durham of two deliveries from Rama Lewis and Rama Lewis will be pumped and he's 3 4 74 and he'll want to meet that 5 for 74 Kimi <laughs> wondering if he can get that double wicket oh that ball spun away from the left hander but I think Kimi he should be pitching more middle on our stump forcing him to play that ball was a bit too wide mm -hmm. so the completion of the 55th 224 for the loss of eight So another 25 overs remaining on day two of this West Indies Regional Championship. Round five action from Spina Park. As you can see some spectators there having their snacks as well, Kimi. The Rastafarian in his Jamaican Talawas jersey supporting the Scorpions as well. Good to see the Scorpions getting support at Spina Park. Graves is nicely and elegantly choving this ball to a whitish long on area first delivery of the over from Pete Salmon that means Pete Salmon have five deliveries to Daniel Durham and immediately short leg feelers coming in the circle two slipping in place as well and why not get a want the Hurricanes get a healthy lead here and repeat someone spinning the ball away from the left hander this two slip is very important so Henry picked up four wickets in that T20 blaze the girls the Jamaica women they're at 38 for two now Williams and McLean they're back in the, the dugout Steel and Nation at the crease and Nation did pretty well in that Super 50 as well. Yes. Shinel Henry as well. So it's good to see Shinel Henry still getting wickets, still scoring runs. They just need another 26 runs from 90 deliveries. So far, Daniel Durham looks very good six deliveries so far and he negotiate all six this is good from Doram this one is looking to sweep it's drifting down the leg side excellent call here by umpire Gustard not interested quick delivery by Pete someone just looking his fifth change of angle this time around as well Kimi yeah he's thinking that yes if I change this angle maybe I can get the wicket of Daniel Durham Ooh, pitch <laughs> of a delivery this one pitch on middle and spun away from the left hander to complete over number 56 at 225 for the loss of eight Turn our attention to the replay here, Kimi. Pitch outside leg, a pitch of a delivery. Well take by Morris. He said, I just have a lead of four runs now. And I think Grease is having a chat with him and saying, 
don't try to force any shot just block i'm at the crease for quite some time i'll try and get the runs but if you see it go for it but just don't force the shot and every run from here on is very crucial for the hurricanes they'd want at least a 50 or 60 lead with two wickets in hand that would do the hurricanes a roll of good here at savannah park yep Still scoring over four runs and over Kimi. Maintaining that run rate. At one point, there was no sun here at Sabina Park. It was rather cool. But for the last 45 minutes, the sun is back in all its glory. It's really hot here now. So only one butter remain for the Hurricanes. That's off the big fast bowler, O'Shane Thomas. Not known for his batting though, Kimi. <laughs> Stephanie Taylor, nation at the crease. Another 23 runs needed, 41 for two. Steady response so far by the Jamaican girls. Made in the country proud, Kimi. Yeah, it will be good for them to take home the T20, T20 title as well. Double. Double. The last time the under 19 boys won the double as well. My good friend Gibson was the manager of the team as well. He was sadly missed by we as Jamaicans and of course all over the world yeah. was an excellent person to be around have good personalities so the world has missed a love sports man in Gibson so it's, it would be good if the girls can pull off a double for the country as well After this over, I'll take my leave. And you'll hear from the voice of the great Chini, the ambassador, the hero, the great Anja Chan. So that there to end the over. The score reads 2-2-5 two, two, for 8 at the end of over number 57. They lead by four runs. Pinock, final words. Excellent spell of bowling so far by twin spins of the Scorpions. Together, they have seven wickets. Four to this man. Pete someone four for 50. And Rama Lewis playing his first game. Three wickets to his name. So now all in all, the Scorpions fighting back late here at Sabina Park on day two of this West Indies Regional Championship Round 5 action from Sabina Park. Yes, so Pete is just one wicket away from a five wicket haul here. Both 22 overs, 50 runs of four wickets. Spinners, they're really... They really perform here. Managed to get down eight wickets. Back with me, it is Chad. Good afternoon, Chad. Yes, good afternoon to all our viewers. The Hurricanes have a lead, but they don't have many wickets in the hutch. Reeve is still there, and he's still fighting. Delivery seems this some bat was involved in that. A bit of inspection going on there with the ball. Seems as if he's cutting some thread.
Well, that's the five wicket haul for Pete Salmon. That was a brilliant catch. The ninth wicket is down. The score reads 225 for nine. Yeah, excellent bowling by Pete Salmon. Another five wicket haul for him. He's, bowl he's bowled really, really well. And certainly deserves that. He built pressure continuously here. And Dora has to go without troubling the scorers. And it seems that this innings is going to be wrapped up in no time at all. Uh, and then just about honors even here. The Jamaicans will be very, very happy with what happened here. Indeed, they have ever. Uh, they have every reason to be happy, especially with the performance of Pete Salmon here. Earlier, Pinnock said he had picked up 20 wickets so far. Well, this one makes 21. For Shane Thomas is the man walking to the crease. Justin Grease, the man still standing. As I said to Pinnock that even if they can't get the wicket of Greaves, they have to try and get the other batters around him. And they are doing that so far. Pity said that Thomas is not known for his batting. Yeah, didn't even bother to put on a cap <laughs> or any headwear at all. Go straight. One bounce to middle. But excellent work here by the Jamaicans. They're really, really good work. They took wickets at regular intervals, really limiting the Hurricanes to getting anything resembling a lead. Yeah, and after that oh, wicket... Beaten, beaten on that one. Sorry. And after that wicket of Andrew, well, the over comes to an end. 58, 58 overs gone, 225 for nine. After that wicket of Andrew, we haven't really seen any partnership being built here. The, the Scorpions not allowing them to get settled at all. Yeah, and it's disappointing, particularly for Greaves, because he's basically playing the, uh, the Carlos Brown role. Um, in terms of the Jamaican innings, that uh, Carlos Brown was really the only score significant until Devil Green lower one, and then Romy Morris as well. So Carty. And uh, Powell with that good start, they put on 72 runs for the first wicket, which laid a platform for the Hurricanes, but unfortunately they couldn't build on that. A lovely 32 from Jewel Andrew. Good counter-attacking innings from the young batter, but uh, certainly they needed more from him. Goes to the big hoik. That's an inside edge. He won't take the run, does Justin Greaves. He doesn't want Lewis to have five deliveries at O'Shane Thomas. And and this is the same thing that uh, Derva should have done when she was, was at the crease this morning. Should have shielded him when Rakim was bowling. This time he gets it, and this time he gets it through the gap of that cow corner region. Actually, it's over the ropes. It's a towering six from Justin Greaves. He's going to have to counter-attack here and see how much runs, as best as how much runs he could get uh, with this last pair at the wicket. Well, 
scores moves up to 231 a lead of 10 runs well he will have to try and attack them because we know that goes again doesn't get it high enough this time and that's the end of Justin Greaves that's how the innings closes out Ramal Lewis picks up his fourth and Justin Greaves goes for a well played 62 but that's how it ends 231 all out a lead of just 10 we'll take a short break right now before the Jamaicans come back out to bat.
Action resumes here at Sabina Park in the third and final session. And the news is Jamaica trail by 10 as they start their second innings. They posted 221 and were able to limit the Leeward Island Hurricanes to 231 all out. Pete Salmon and uh, Ramal Lewis doing the damage with five wickets and four respectively. Yeah, the Scorpions also restrict the Leeward Islands from getting 250, avoiding them from getting that batting point. And I must say good afternoon to Anthony Corey Brown and Shams Restaurant and Shams Bar over there in St. Catherine. Well, it was a good performance from the bowlers though, Chad, to nine wickets apiece, between nine wickets between Rama Lewis who picked up four and Pete who got a five wicket haul. And just that one wicket from Derval Green, they really, the Hurricanes, they had a wonderful start. And then Rommel was introducing the attack and he got rid of Powell and Car uh, Casey Carty. They really haven't gotten that great partnership after. Beautiful start there by Jamar Louis. Immediately on the ball. After Casey Carter was dismissed. So it is Carlos Brown who batted pretty well in the first innings. He made 80. Kurt McKenzie played 8. A very interesting second day here at Sabina Park. Yeah, Carlos Brown was the man who really helped the Jamaica Scorpion inning together with a well played 80 at the top of the order. In terms of support, he uh, had to wait a little while until Romain Morris came in at number 7. Uh, the top order was really, really taken care of by uh, Louis and Archibald. Edged and gone. No. No, no, no. The catch was taken by Hamilton, but the umpire hasn't raised his hand. So Carlos Brown didn't get anything on that. We'll have to have a look at the replay on that one, as the umpire says, did not raise his finger. Well, the reaction of the batter, you can see that he, he didn't get any back to that one. Maybe that's why the umpire says, not out. But maybe Hamilton hears something, some noise behind the stumps well we certainly have to respect the umpire's decision on that one the hurricanes went up all together oh beautiful again wonderful follow-up delivery from louis pulled really really well in the first innings took three wickets mackenzie blackwood and lug Yeah, the Hurricanes won't want the uh, Scorpions to bat too long. I think whatever total they put up will be a difficult one to get if, it, if this game does go, go into the fourth day as well. Um, there's still a lot of time left in the day, of course. It's just approaching 4 o'clock. Uh, it looks like there are about 18 overs left in the day. Kimberly Forbes has better eyes than she isn't sure either. Swing! And he's bowled! Oh no, it's actually an LBW. Swing! Late, early, late swing from Jeremiah Louis. And once again, the Jamaica Scorpions lose an early wicket. This time it's Carlos Brown, who's LBW to Jeremiah Louis for a duck. 
Well, 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 let's have a look at the replay on this one. It's none for one after the first over. Well, it's the same thing that happened to the Hurricanes. Looking at the replay. Well, he was trucked in front. Took a while for the umpire to go up. Analyzes that one quite well. And Ma uh, Brown is gone without scoring. It's the same thing that happened in the innings of the Hurricane. They lost the, wi the first wicket without scoring. Carlos Brown is back in the dugout. Jermaine Blackwood, the man walking towards the crease. Okay. And he's facing a king pair, Jermaine Blackwood. But you, it, it'll be interesting to see who starts from the southern end, and it's immediately Rakim Cornwall. Rakim Cornwall bringing himself into the attack. I would have liked to see Colin Archibald bowled alongside uh, Jeremiah Louis. Right hand, left hand bowlers, and then they both exhibited good control in the first inning. Yeah, maybe Cornwall brings himself on because he sees that this, the, pit, the pitch was doing so much for Rommel and Pete. So he's going with spin and pace at the moment. But it's a very interesting game here, Chad. Yeah, Cornwall picked up three wickets in the first innings, and he's going to be bowling with a brand new ball here. This should be interesting for Kirk McKenzie as well, who didn't get a much of a score in the first inning, just eight runs. Kimberly? Yes. And the, the Hurricanes, they'd want to see if they can get at least four wickets before the day's play. Well, one is down already. It's, it's for Mackenzie and Blackwood to build a partnership and get some runs. Probably have about 18 overs or 17 overs to go. Good start by Cornwall immediately on the money. Yeah, they're going to make the Jamaicans sweat for these 10 runs here, Kimberly. It's been a low scoring affair, but it really has been an excellent contest in terms of cricket. Some batters showing the application, Carlos Brown. Uh, Justin Greaves in particular. Little cameos from Romain Morris and Jewel Andrew from the Jamaica Scorpions and Hurricanes respectively. Tugs this one into the leg side and he'll get off the mark. It's one for one. That's good stuff there from Cook McKenzie. It's Jeremy Blackwood who is on strike. Facing a king bear here, Kimberly. Only three deliveries before he was dismissed by Jeremiah Louis. Castled. <laughs> See what Cornwall is up to. It's Blackwood. And maybe he can have a comeback in the second innings here. Once he applies himself, try to be patient and focus. Appeal for like before, drifting down the leg, maybe slightly playing around his front part there. One for one after two. Yeah, definitely going down and around the leg though. I do find that Blackwood caught across his pads a little bit. There's the coach for the Windward Island, the Leeward Island Hurricanes, and boy, he, will he be a happy man? He's down at the southern end of the ground. Uh, 
Jeremiah Louis has been having a wonderful season so far. Uh, Chad, and he has picked up three wickets in the first innings. Three for 34 from 11 overs. Wide, too wide from Louis, and signaled thusly from the umpire. He does get the ball to move and swing to Jeremiah Louis. Obviously, he's just trying to overcompensate to the left handed Mackenzie who's on strike. And if you notice, there is a pack offside. You can see what he was trying to do, trying to get that one outside of the off stop, but he needs to come a little closer to Mackenzie. Midoff is in a, in a deep position. It's a, yeah, you're quite right. It's a packed off tight field. There's just a fine leg and that mid on on the leg side. Can't stray at all, do we? But I, I think that, that the position of that mid off is very, very interesting indeed. So they're just trailing by another eight runs. One wicket down for the Scorpion Brown, gone without scoring. heard it's raining in other parishes uh chad but not here in kingston it's humid here Side. Now he's going around the wicket to the left hander. Over the wicket, I should say. He just needs to, he's just starting a little too wide at Louis, and it's a good angle for him to come in. Uh, if you can get that ball to pitch on off stump, and then you can get one of those three slips into play. Like I said, he's just overcompensating. He knows he doesn't have much protection on the leg side. Mm -hmm. Just has to get his radar right. And if he does get it right, he can create some problem for the Scorpions. That's the line that he wants to get on there. Well played in the end of by McKenzie. Have you have you have you purchased your World Cup ticket as yet, Chad? Yes, indeed. Beautiful, beautiful, appealing for court behind is uh, Jamar Hamilton. Uh, <laughs> Cook McKenzie just slashing at that one. I think it was there for the shot, I believe, but he just did not move his feet at all. Didn't get his foot closer to that one, Kimberly, and that's how he found himself in a bit of a bother. Yeah, he just wanted to shuffle across that lit uh, a little bit. Down the leg side, well stopped by Jamar Hamilton. Does he know? I don't think he does. That will go down as a leg by and he'll go all the way for four. I thought Hamilton just got something on that to stop it, but wide delivery by Louis. Yeah, just evading Hamilton. Ushin Thomas at fine leg had no chance with that one. Fortuitous four to end the over six for six for one. And that's the score here. The Jamaica Scorpion still trail by four. 
Yes, five extras given away so far from the Hurricanes. We saw where they gave away 17 in the first innings. Yet to see Blackwood face Louis. And I'm wondering what's going through the head of Blackwood now, knowing that he hasn't really had that season, been struggling. But this is a time that he can redeem himself. There's all the time in the world. We're just in day two. Beaten is that one by Cornwall. Just touching down and just drifting past the bat. Extra bounce of racking Cornwall. He's a tall man. It's a new ball. Didn't get off well with the bat, Cornwall. He was sent back pretty early by Pete. Scorpion still trail by four. A loud appeal, well, a half of appeal. Looked like a good shot here. Yeah, let's see if Blackwood gets out of the line with this one. Uh, I think Jack might be just out of the line of the off thumb. Well, back punches this one through the extra cover region. And he'll get a single Blackwood, so he won't. Uh, he'll avoid the king pair. He gets a single. Pinches the strike as well. Seven for one after four. Mackenzie's on one from 11 deliveries. Blackwood is on one from seven. Louis Ball two over. Picked up a wicket for just a run. They still, the Scorpions, they still trail by another three runs. Spectators enjoying the evening here. Good cricket. There's some officials of the Jamaica Cricket Association on your screen. Jeremiah Louis, who is continuing from the Courtney Walsh end. Goes the short ball, doesn't get a connection on that one, does Blackwood. And he rehearses avoiding it, which is what he should have done in the first place. But that was true to Hamilton in a flash. Effort delivery there from Louis. Now he's a young toddler who's enjoying the cricket, or maybe not enjoying the cricket, but enjoying a mother on the phone. <laughs> and now Aww. mommy's off the phone, so now she can cuddle. Oh, he might be she. I'm seeing, I'm seeing pink. Beautiful delivery, but well flicked away. A little bit too straight, maybe, from Jeremiah Louis, but it wasn't a bad delivery, I think. But well played by Jimmy Blackwood. Flicked away into the midwicket region for a delightful fall. He could hear the applaud coming from downstairs after that shot there from Blackwood they know he can bat but it's just to get the right start and to capitalize on it and go on from there tend to get out when gets to at least a double figure of 10 or so and they have a lead now the scorpions bold this time middle stump peg back absolutely poor cricket from jermaine blackwood 11 for two now and he's bowled again by Jeremiah Louis. Should I say that was a commentator's curse? Because I just said that he 
struggled after trying to get into double figures or get into double figures. The score reads 11 for 2. The, con the struggle continues for Jermaine Blackwood. He's gone for 5 from 9 deliveries. And the hurricane, they are blowing a wind here at Sabina Park in the hot sun. There is not sensible cricket at all from Jermaine Blackwood. Really, really silly you would have to say you just hit him for four why are you going why are you going back at that again Leroy Love will come out now the Jamaicans in all sorts of bother now 12 11 for two they lead by just one here With a man who is on great form, such as Jeremiah Louis, you, as you mentioned, you just hit him for a four. I would not attempt to go for another boundary. I would just watch him, block him, and if the shot is there again, I'll go for it. But and the thing is, if he if can pull up the replay again, it was basically a straight ball. It, uh, I'm going to ask our director, Matthew, to pull up the replay again. A little bit of shape inside, but it was genuinely just a straight ball that he played all around. If you can just slow it down, Matthew, as well. Yeah, just straight through him. Really no need for that shot. Not at all. Well, the question will come up on many lips again. Why is he still in the Scorpion setup or in the squad? He's not producing any runs at all. That is for him to answer. It is Leroy Lug at the crease. <laughs> well, I think uh, Blackwood has really been short of runs, so I think instead of maybe trying to buy his time, he's trying to hit himself into a zone where he feels comfortable. Just not working for him. Lou Louis to Lug. Good lifting delivery outside the off thumb. Lug was also bowled uh, was caught off the bowling of Louis for just 10 off 17 in uh, the first innings yeah, and it seems as if Louis got the ticket of Blackwood got him in the first innings for a duck and now got him in the second innings for five yeah, he was caught at slip of, uh, by Justin Greaves Nice push. Excellent cricket there from Lug. And he will get off the mark with that. So essentially now the Jamaica Scorpions are two for two. As the field switches across for the left-handed McKenzie. Kimberly Forbes is so annoyed by the performance of the Jamaica Scorpion. She's going to share her views on X, <laughs> formerly Twitter. <laughs> Prepare for a Kimmy rant world. Louis. This is how he started yesterday too for the Hurricanes picked up three wickets that was the wicket of Mackenzie Blackwood and Lug well he got the wicket of Carlos Brown and that's the end of the over it is 11 for two at the end of over number five so Louis leading the charge again for the Hurricanes looking over on the sea we think we're seeing Port Royal here Cornwall to continue. Pulling to log.
dancing up the pitch does lug and he hits that one down to the sweeper position and he throws away his wicket well 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 the scorpions are collapsing now easy catch by that fielder down at cow corner trying to counter attack rakim cornwall and he goes 11 for three now or i think it's actually 13 for three is the score well another one bites the dust and there the jamaica scorpions they're in deep waters leroy lug he's gone for a duck He actually has one, I believe. I think the scoreboard is being updated. But for sure, we know the Jamaica Scorpions have lost three wickets. It's not looking good at all. And really, really, I mean, Carlos Brown got a good delivery. Okay, fine. It was a good delivery and he was LBW. But Blackwood and Lug, absolutely nonsensical cricket here. Yes, bad cricket. It's almost as if they just had to make 10 runs to win. <laughs> and they're just trying to finish it off in style. And then, and I know a lot of viewers they are disgruntled right now. Yeah, what they really need now is a captain's knock from Brandon King. If there ever one was needed, it's certainly right now for the Jamaica Scorpions. They need to make a game out of this. Twelve for three is the official score. And by, by the look of how things is going right now, maybe this game can finish tomorrow. If they don't get that partnership, lots of overs to go. Well, not to cast aspersions, but if the Jamaicans bat how they, how they are now, it finish this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't get offended, Jamaica Scorpion fans. King settles. And a lovely straight drive, but straight back at the stumps. So essentially, the Jamaicans are two for three. So they lead by two. Three batters already back in the hutch. Captain King will really have to play a role here. Goes back and tucks this one down through the mid-wicket region, the cow corner. He plays it along the ground, Brandon King, and gets off the mark with a four. He really played that one aggressively. Gets away to the boundary. And a good way to get off the mark. Now, Leroy Lug danced up the pitch to, to, to sort of combat Cornwall. Up in the air, and it's dropped a short leg, is it? Oh my goodness, it's all happening here. What a wonderful over by Rakim Cornwall. We'll have a look at the replay on this one here. I think that might be dropped, I'm not sure. The reaction from the uh, Hurricanes players didn't see much. Dancing up the pitch is Brandon King. And he gets that one your extra cover this time. Give himself some room. And that's four. He's counter-attacking here. 20 for three at the end of the over. And that's the way how Log should have danced down the wicket to the delivery that got him out. And Brandon, in total control of that, puts it away and gets the boundary. He moves up to eight. But we saw in the first inning, Devil Green was dancing on the pitch, but when Devil Green didn't get to the pitch of the ball, he was driving it and pushing it down the roofs by single. Luck clearly was into the pitch of the one that he danced up to and uh, just spooned it into that field at Cow Corner. And that last instant, Brandon King was into the pitch of that one either, but he adjusted and opened up his shot to carve it through the extra cover region. Jeremiah Louis to continue, Kirk McKenzie. Must be wondering what is going on <laughs> as he's been there from the start and there's the one off 12. Louis also got McKenzie in the first innings as well. Caught uh, Jamar Hamilton. A swinging delivery that 
uh, try to cut too close. They've got a bottom edge. And Hamilton had to take it, dive into his right. It was a really, really good catch behind the stumps. Effectively 10 for 3, the Jamaica Scorpions. They erased the 10 run deficit. They've added 10 runs, all for the cost of 3 wickets. Jeremiah Louis with 2, Cornwall with 1. Looking comfortable, McKenzie, but he always looks comfortable and then contrives to get himself out. Yeah, we must say congratulations to the Jam Jamaica women. They won that game against Barbados by six wickets. So it's three from three for them. Bowling from very, very wide at the crease is Jeremiah Louis. I'd like to, I'd like him to get a little bit closer to the stump, especially as he's going around the wicket to the left-hander. Because, because of course, McKenzie, if the ball is going across, and McKenzie can just leave it all day long, which he will do. Getting a little bit closer to the stump, so that's a better line. Our delivery was definitely a little bit closer. Might just be varying his uh, his delivery points. Well, having Mackenzie and King at the crease, the conversation would be try not to give away your wicket. Three wickets already down. Soon close of play, another half an hour to go before close of play. Even if they have to just block for the rest of the evening, that's what you got to do. Of course, uh, they, they can extend play because they have, I think it's 12 overs left in the day at the end of the over, 20 for 3. And I think that's a maiden. Yes, it is a maiden from Jeremiah Louis. Excellent bowling from him, 2 for 6. Rocky Cornwall, 1 for 10. Doesn't get much connection on that one, does Brandon King? He has to be careful in trying to force the issue here, King. Yes, we know he likes to be aggressive, but his team are three wickets down. Up in the air! Well, 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 Rocky Cornwall continuing to ask questions of Brandon King. Marlon Pinnock is so angry at the performance of the Jamaica Scorpions. He's moving furniture around, slamming doors. <laughs> but who wouldn't be, be hang angry? I think I saw him kicking the igloo earlier. <laughs> Hope he didn't do any damage. But he's wearing clocks, so I don't think uh, it isn't the steel tip boots that he likes to wear usually. 
Pat Pleasant from King, and that's an easy single. That's what I want to see from him. Because, of course, it's, uh, it's coming on 4.30. The mites ha we might have at least another 45 minutes. We'll have to see how quickly they get through the overs. Because, of course, the other consideration is with Cornwall on one end, mm -hmm. they're just going to fly through the overs. And uh, Louis, I suspect, might have a couple more overs in him. Nice push by Mackenzie. That's straight, but he'll just get a single. I thought he hit it a little bit better than that to get to the boundary. End of the over, 22 for three after eight. Some final words from Miss Kimberly Forbes before she takes her leave. And uh, Marlon Pinnock has to come back and commentate in his angry, angry way. Yeah, they will just have to continue from here. Just keep the scoreboard ticking. That's Brandon King and Mackenzie. And try not to overplay or force any shot. Work it, work, work it around the ground and take it from there tomorrow morning. Thank you very much for those thoughts, Kimberly Forbes. Marlon Pinnock has some furniture adjustment to make before he comes into position. He doesn't commentate on any old chair he requires a couch and a recliner there he is putting his feet up Marlon Pinnock and I think he's ready to come and say it now good afternoon to your viewers good afternoon to you Mr. Andrew Chang wonderful spell of bowling so far by Jeremiah Louie yeah and good stuff from him ably supported by Cornwall <laughs> Very comfortable here in the commentary box, Mr. Andrew Chang. Oh, yes, oh, indeed. I like those pretty socks you're wearing. Yeah, when we, I'm wearing Jamaican socks, <coughs> Jamaican colored socks. But uh, they're, not doing, they're not doing my socks justice here, the Scorpions. One thing for sure, though, Jeremiah Louis doing justice for the Leeward Islands hurricane at the moment. Picked up three wickets in that first innings and now he's back in his second innings and so far so good for him. He's two for six. And into his fifth over as well. That shows he's, he's fairly effective with the new ball penny. I would like to see him with the with the older ball because of course the spinners rule the roost for the hurricanes in the middle overs. As with the Jamaicans as well. And in that six runs, Andrew, Chairman Blackwood whipped the ball over mid wicket as well for a boundary. Mm. So it goes to show how disciplined Jeremiah Louis so far in this innings. Yeah, indeed. Took a little while to get his radar right for Mackenzie. Still think he's maybe a little bit too straight. He needs to be on that uh, fourth stump line. Well, for sure, both batters at the wicket. Both played for this club here in Jamaica. Kingston Cricket Club, of course. Have great understanding of each other as well. Scorpions and the back foot here. And late on day two here at Spina Park. Still chilled by 12 runs, Andrew. Yeah. Nice punch by Mackenzie, well fielded by the big man at cover there. Seems to be Louis as well. Louis. Yeah, it is Mikhail Louis, thank you very much. He actually, he's wearing the same number as Brandon King, 53. You're absolutely correct. Hmm, mm. indeed. Getting the last sunshine here for this afternoon very bright sunshine here at Spina Park and so what number were, were you fond of Penny when you when you had to pick a number to go in your well mind? my number is 14 14 why 14 Penny actually playing for the Jamaica Defense Force team Gordon Bryan is my cricketer as well both Gordon Bryan and Jeremy Blackwood are from Humu Technical and that's where I attended. So I always wear Brian's jersey and I get familiar with the number 14 jersey. 
so I kept it as my personal jersey even playing for the Defense Force team end of the over 22 4 3 yeah, well, as you know I'm a Liverpool fan and uh, of course the 96 fans that died in a tragic Hillsborough disaster of 1989 so my number is usually 96 oh, oh. Uh, it's been updated to 97 because a, a late, there was a later casualty. Um, and closely, of closely related to that uh, Hillsborough disaster. And of and course, a fellow cricketer from Pakistan, a part of the Wicked Keepers Union, wear that number as well. Hmm. Would that be suffers? Not at all. Used to open the batting and also. The wicked keeping for batting. Pakistan. You got to have me scratching my head there. Rashid Latif Moin Khan from Pakistan, you say? Indeed. Akmal? Akmal. That's ah, the name. Absolutely go. correct. Got there in the end, Cameron <laughs> Akmal. Was a very special cricketer as well. I, I, a matter of fact, it was two brothers of them as well. Flicked nicely by King into the mid-wicket region for a single. And this is the way how Brandon King should be batting. Look to form the strike, look to rotate the strike, bat as long as possible. Kurt McKenzie on the other hand faced 25 deliveries for his two runs so far. Looking at start is McKenzie. Need a big one as well. Just two of 25, Kurt McKenzie. I think he's trying to set himself up for the long inning. But uh, does it make sense if you're not making any runs, Penny? You're just wasting deliveries, really. Well, of course. Look at Leroy Log dismissal. Goes for the sweep shot this time. Does he get connection on it? He does indeed. Penny applauds. As McKenzie loosens the shackles to get a four. That will take him up to six. 27 for three now, the Jamaica Scorpions. Effectively, 17 for three. McKenzie getting his first boundary. Paddy line delivery this time by Rakim Cornwall. And easy pickings for Kurt McKenzie. He won't miss out on that. Needed by the Scorpions. Three batters so far back in the pavilion. Scorpions middle order have to stand up here if the Scorpions are to mass a decent total for the Hurricanes. When eight overs remaining after this one from Rakim Cornwall. The Scorpion would want to go to close of play this afternoon with no further loss to those three wickets. There's a long off field in position as well as a fielder just in front of square on the leg side of a deep, deep forward square leg, you can call that. Another delivery down the leg side, well taken by Hamilton. End of the over, 27 for three. So as I mentioned, eight overs remaining for the day, Andrew. Scorpions lost three very important wickets this afternoon. Carlos Brown, who made a brilliant half century in the first innings. Chopped leg before in the second innings by this man Jeremiah Louis. And of course, remove German Blackwood. Clean and bold after whipping that ball towards the onside. Then the very next delivery. Pitching up was Jeremiah Louis. Blackwood looking to hit that ball over long off this time. And got his castle knocked over. Then Leroy Log in a loose shot and was caught at the deep. Scorpions 
in a real bother here in the second day of this Western East Regional Championship. This one is edge. Just chopping. I think that's dropped. Well, 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 Jeremiah Louis. It fell short, yeah. That's what Penny thinks. And uh, excellent fielding in the slips there. Yeah, I think it just fell short. It just bounced in front of just Greaves, I think it is, awkwardly. Excellent work in the end. Continuing to ask questions, Jeremiah Louis into his sixth over now, just conceding six runs. One of those was a four for, for Blackwood. And then he dismissed Blackwood, absolutely scattered his thumb spinny. I think if the George Headley stand wasn't in, in place, one of those stumps would have ended up in Kingston Harbour. <laughs> Nice drive there. And it's like this field there. Will they run the single? Yes, they do indeed. Louis is not happy with the big man Daniel Durham there. It bounce a bit off. And I there. think he was trying to feel that one. Mikhail Louis was the feeler in this occasion. It is Mikhail Louis, thank you very much. Penny with the eyes of a hawk. <laughs> He almost has uh, x-ray vision. You can see through players and so their numbers on the back of their shoes. He's a very tall fellow, is Mikhail Louis. There's some very, very tall fellows on this side. It's ironic that the fast bowlers are so short. Flailed at that one, there's Mackenzie, and he gets that through. And that's a delightful four cut behind square. Playing away from his body there was Kurt Mackenzie. Lucky enough, he got it away from that fielder at the Buckwood Point region, but four runs nonetheless to Kurt McKenzie. Yeah, not a man moved on that occasion. With been offered there by Jer Jeremiah Louis, second boundary of his bowling so far, two for 11. Starting to build a little lead here, the Scorpions. Pleasant drive by McKenzie, but there's a field that bit off, so there's no run. So yeah, so the lead is 22. And of course, they'd be looking in the region of uh, at least over 150, I think, would definitely make the win with the Leroy's Hurricane sweat. Especially with the good bowling of Pete Salmon and Ramal Lewis. Spinishing nine wickets in that first inning. Spin Twins doing the damage for the Scorpions. Good to see Raman Lewis playing his first game for the season. Picked up four wickets as well. Missed out on the hook there, but that one was moving away. A little bit too casual, I think, though, from McKenzie. That ball didn't cut up as Kurt McKenzie would expect. Hence why he didn't get the, what he requires of it. As you can see, the assistant coach of the Hurricanes is looking on as well. Of course, the coach of this team is Stuart Williams. Yeah, quite stylish in his shades there. So Pete Salmon took 5 for 50 and Ramal Lewis 4 for 80 in the Hurricanes first innings. And they were dismissed with 231. Short delivery down the leg side again. Easily avoided this time by McKenzie. Complete. Really had effort ball. 32 for 3. Yes, effort delivered here by Jeremiah Louis. Rakeem Cornwall. 1 for 17 so far. He got the wicket. Big Leroy Log. Very soft and team dismissal as well for Leroy Log. As a batter, you need to value your wickets. And so far, haven't seen that of the Scorpions in this inning so far. First time this inning, you're going to see the big fast bowler. Shane Thomas, he's from Melbourne, 
cricket club here in Kingston, Jamaica. Played CPL for a number of years as well. Started playing CPL for the Jamaica Talawas. Yeah, according to the time on uh, Penny's custom Swiss Rolex, it's uh, 4.45. There's about 15 minutes of conventional time left, but uh, with seven overs left completed in the day, I suspect we'll go on to at least maybe about quarter past five. O'Shane Thomas is into the attack. And Brandon King cuts and cuts well. And third, and the fielder from deep backward point comes around. There's the fielding. Excellent work coming off yeah. deep backward point. Bones you by Archibald. Yeah, just a single day indeed. It actually went to his stronger side, his left side. That's why it was easy pickings for him. So Cornwall has been replaced by uh, O'Shane Thomas. Washington Thomas in this game so far haven't no offense to Thomas, wicket. but I would have gone with Archibald instead I think uh, Archibald is a very very dangerous bowler but he might replace Louis short delivery bouncing delivery and it's a wide signal by the umpire so Washington Thomas haven't gotten any wicket this contest so far at Spina Park. This fifth round fixtures. Of course, this is the second day of the fifth round West Indies Regional Championship game being played here at Spina Park. So, if you're just joining us, the Scorpions at the moment 34 for 3. They lead by 24 runs here. Could carry through to wicket keeper Hamilton this time around. Yeah, just a little too wide from O'Shane. He needs to get that a little bit closer. As you can see. Because uh, huh? if he bowls wide at the crease, then Mackenzie can trust the angle to get past the stumps. Just needs to get it a little bit closer. Well, of course, two men behind square for that hook shot. Still very wide at the crease. This time uh, another bounce and delivery. It really is a mixed bag from Oshin Thomas. He, you can only think how dangerous he would be if he gets those if he gets a string together a couple deliveries on point. But if you look at that delivery from Oshin Thomas, wide outside the Alstom. And still Kurt McKenzie still following the shot with his team under some pressure here at 34 for three. Well I think uh, there's a field that I at deep backward point for McKenzie so I think he's maybe looking to hook that or to cut that over that feet though if he gets anything on it this one is a short delivery at the body at the left shoulder McKenzie rides it well the throw comes in from Hamilton as McKenzie scuttles into the non-strikers and I think a direct throw and he might have been in some serious trouble there excellent delivery there coming in from Oshin Thomas just to that blind spot there and had it Kurt McKenzie in a spot of bother but in the end no harm done another single to the Scorpions total which is up to 35 for 3 just approach 10 minutes to 5 here in Kingston Jamaica very hot sunshine Oshin Thomas so four deliveries so far in this spell. None for three. Get some width on this one. Cuts well does Brandon King. But uh, Archibald is there and it's just a single. Yes, some width on Alpha Deer by Oshin Thomas. Brandon King just went back and cracked that ball out to the man at the back point region. But just a single though. Hurricanes this session have been very economical so far 
Yeah, he's making his debut for the Leeward Islands Hurricanes in this match, O'Shea Thomas. Didn't take any wickets at all in the first innings. Lucky enough. Get up in the middle inside edge, just runs past the keeper. Feel from deep back with the come to run. O'Shea Thomas was unlucky not to get anything there, but it's actually a no ball as well. So even if it had dribbled onto the stumps, he wouldn't have gotten a wicket. Well, so far, O'Shea Thomas in this over, getting some pace out of the wicket, getting bounce as well. Scorpions would want to go into close of play this evening. With three wicket still down. Just don't want to expose the middle order, um, Andrew. Indeed, lead by 28 now, the Scorpions. With again, but this one didn't bounce as high as Brandon King expected. He wanted to crack that through the extra cover region. No connection, 38 for 3. Realize just the arms in there coming in from Brandon King. No chance for over the weight to the ball, and hence why there was no connection. Yeah, he certainly didn't pay his internet bill with that one. There was no connection at all. <laughs> and he likes that one. Indeed, we're going to see a change of bowling from our commentary box end, which is a Courtney Wall gen. And will be Durham. Durham. I, I have no problem with this. I have no problem with Durham because you. Also bowled well in the first innings, but again, considering the score that Jamaica have, I would have put on Colin Archibald instead of Oshin Thomas. Nothing against Oshin Thomas, but Archibald has just exhibited better control, has three wickets in the first innings. And uh, and, and maybe it's a valid I idea think you as well. Held, you could have held Oshin for a burst to, towards the end. If they, you know, give him a, a two or three overs uh, at the la at the very end, and say, "Oh Shane, you have two overs. I want you to go all out. Don't no, just full gas, full nitrous, everything." But in terms mm -hmm. of that, I think they could they should have gone with Archibald to just see if they could get another wicket or two to make the Jamaicans really sweat before the end of this play. It's a quick thing. Is a chance for a run out? This was, I would say, a good running between the wickets by the Scorpion, but that was a touch and go there, Andrew. Yeah, good pick up by the fielder, but I think he should have thrown to the striker's end. I think he went all the way to the non striker's end. That's Casey Carty. Never balanced at all to throw that ball properly. Brandon King did get the head start, so I can see why he went to the non striker's end as well. In the first innings, Daniel Durham really bowled well. Varies his deliveries as well. Has very good control. Another single to the Scorpions total. Just up to 40 for 3, Andrew. Could save 30 for three because the Scorpions lead by 30 runs. Pleasant that's looking shot. Yeah, that's driven beautifully by McKenzie. That's all along the turf. That was screaming into the long off boundary before. That is a pleasant shot. And I think the shot of the inning so far from the Jamaica Scorpion. Indeed, over pitch delivered here by Daniel Durham. Terrific timing here by Kurt McKenzie. He's second. 32 run partnership so far from 44 deliveries. These two at the wicket need to bat as long as possible for the Scorpions. Good response from Durham just coming back in. Stayed, it looked like it kept a little low as well. Considering this is a new ball penny. That didn't bounce as much as he as I would have expected. What I like, what I would want to see from Kurt McKenzie, is he, if he could get a hundred for the Scorpion, that would be very good. He's getting starts, Andrew, but as I mentioned, he's not capital capitalizing on the start and getting big scores. 
Oh, inside edge. Gets that. And the, the run is on the shot. Like, gets around. The throw is wide as well at the down strikers. And it's all happening here. 44 for 4. It's a Nelson after 13 overs, Penny. 44, 44 for 3. My apologies. I'm calling another wicket on the score pins. That's not the case. It's actually 45 for 3. So my call of a Nelson was completely wrong in that sense. Well, of course, Kurt McKenzie just been on the lazy side that delivery and nearly chucked that ball back onto his stump lucky enough he's still at the wicket with the scorpions desperate for some runs here at Spina Park three wickets to fall this afternoon for the scorpions two of those wickets fell to Jeremiah Louis. Oshin Thomas will be continuing this time around. Going to Kurt McKenzie. So far we've seen Oshin Thomas getting good pace, good bounce out of the wicket. why there's two fielders placed behind square for that short pitch delivery so maybe the the plan here from Rocky Cornwall by Oshin Thomas now is to bowl some short pitch deliveries to the right to the batters at the middle shake them up the energetic run up from uh, Oshin Thomas when he's coming in he's, he's pumping he's pumping I also think that his jump penny lingers a lot in the air, which would mean that he would lose a little bit of pace, which then means that he has to bring the shoulders around to generate that, that pace that he's well known for. Now, of course, uh, yes, the jump does come in useful, but I think he can learn how to... I, I, I remember Andy Roberts saying that he had two bounces, one, uh, and the trick with the second one was he just jumped a little higher. So he could, O'Shane Thomas could learn to have a, a, a more glided approach to the crease. And then use that extra bounce for just the, for the, the surprise extra bouncer. And I would, uh, for Andy Roberts, it was that simple. He just said, I just used to jump a little bit higher. And uh, there would be no discernible change in his action, of course. I don't think a batsman is really looking at uh, how far a fast bowler gets off the ground. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, he's certainly looking at the ball in the hand. Flirting with that one was McKenzie. No foot movement there on that one. He just had a swing at it. And Penny is upset with him and shakes his head. Because he knows McKenzie needs to do a lot better than that. I, uh, and I think Indeed. Brandon King will be reminding him of that as well. He has four overs remaining after this over with the team in a spot of bother. You don't want to be flirting with danger outside the Alstom just before the close of play here at Sabina Park. Drifting on the leg side, appeal for a leg before, but it's definitely going on the leg side. And of course, the other thing is, you don't want to give O'Shane Thomas a wicket because he's a bowler who's been struggling. And if he gets that first wicket, then it might all click into place for him. And O'Shane Thomas is a very, very dangerous bowler when he's on song. You're absolutely correct. You don't want to give him a fear be. Then he destroyed the middle of the Scorpions batting. He's not getting the result. Keep him that way, Andrew. And he's a wicked taker. So once he's, he gets into his own, he can create havoc at Spina Park. With again for Brandon King. Cuts again. Gets it down to third man again. I'm enjoying these little innings from Brandon King so far. He's been very, very positive. He's taken runs when available to him. He's pinched the strike there, 47 for three. The Jamaicans at the end of the over. Well, 
of course Brandon King and Kurt McKenzie both had the wicket both have good understanding of each other and they need to build a big partnership if the Scorpions are to mass Durham will continue his first over went for seven runs a respectable total here at Sabina Park this uh, Doran King should be an interesting contest as well. Because of course he get the ball to drift back into King. And he can get it to cut away as well. There's a sweep out on the boundary. So there's protection if uh, Doran does three. And off a width. Of course, he's a powerful batter, Brandon King. If he slaps that square, more than likely it's going to go for four. Yes, Brandon King is a very dangerous customer once he's get going. And as I say that, there's an adjustment in the field, and that's people. Well, I think it's just a switch in personnel. As uh, Oshin Thomas is going on the sweeper boundary. Yeah, Oshin Thomas is going to the sweeper boundary, and the fielder who was previously there is now at uh, backward point. Looks to be Colin Archibald, like could be mistaken. Brandon King just looking to force that ball through the offside. It's actually uh, Kyron Powell there, backward point. It is indeed. All tall players, though. Long on and long off in position as well for King. I don't think that's much of a surprise. Deep backward square as well. Good stuff by the Jamaican captain. This, I, I think this is he's setting the tone of what his team needs to do. And that's where experience lies with Brandon King. Very experienced cricketer. What do you have to say about Blackwood? Vast experience player is Blackwood. Just nutty. Vast experience, but he certainly didn't use it today. 47 for 3 at the <laughs> end of the over. I think that was a maiden as well from... No, I think there was one run in that over. But if you look at German, Blackwood was the vice captain at one point for the West Indies test team. And then got job, came back. It, was, it is 47 for 3, so there. Earlier on in some interviews, Blackwood say he wants to use this rest in his regional for the tournament to get some runs, get back into the West Indies test team. And so far, Blackwood haven't been firing for the Scorpions. This man, Ashin Thomas, not firing as well for the Hurricanes. Yeah, just three over scheduled for the day's play to come. It's just after five o'clock. Three minutes after five to be exact. I'm resorting to using my phone now as uh, they turn this into a leg side. Mackenzie, they're coming back for the second. The pickup is not good by Jewel Andrew. Well, uh, passes might have been in some trouble here. And good I'm having trouble looking at your phone, Penny, because the uh, uh, looking at your watch because the shine from the diamond is reflecting badly on the Rolex. I can't see the time. So I'll <laughs> look at my phone instead. Good run in between the wickets by the two batters in the middle for the Scorpions, and that is needed. This is good cricket youngsters watching in the north stand really appreciate that running good delivery well played by mckenzie He'll get a single here that's good cricket diving effort here by kieran powell can't prevent another single to the scorpions as a 50 comes up for the scorpions 50 for three here at spina park 
late on day two of this West Indies Regional Championship round five action. A yeah, lead of exactly 40 now for the Scorpions. As a drive by King hits that square in front of the square and that goes into the Kingston Cricket Club Pavilion. Wonderful shot all along the turf from Brandon King. Has a little bit of width, but just open up the face and use the pace that uh, is on offer from Oshin Thomas. Over pitch delivered here coming in from Oshin Thomas. Brandon King in tremendous form. Just came on the front foot and opened the face of that bat. Man at the Pakut Point Bonji in Archibald had no chance whatsoever. And four more runs to the Scorpion and also to Captain Brandon King. Loose from Brandon King. Very, very loose. Trying to guide that one. It didn't get up as much as he would like. Kept a little bit low. Leeward Islands. Hurricane left out Aid Walls Jr. And of course, Oshin Thomas came in for the Hurricanes. And so far, Thomas haven't registered a wicket so far in this contest. He'd want to make a mark here at his very home ground, Spina Park. Oh, well, edged. It's got a, a game too casual from Brandon King. Just holding his bat out of that one. Oh, Shane Thomas strike. Get rid of the Jamaica captain. 54 for 4 now. Horrible, horrible stuff there from Brandon King. Really, really silly indeed. And oh, Shane Thomas gets in the wicked column now. We were talking earlier about getting him out of the game. But as I can see on the player, just flirting outside the awesome. Just the hands going. No movement off the foot. Shane Thomas picks up his first wicket of the game and a very, very important wicket of the Jamaica Scorpions, Captain Brandon King. Yeah, really, really just, it was a nothing shot from Brandon King. I really don't know what he was trying to do there. He had already drilled O'Shane Thomas for four and they've already collected they've collected seven runs in the over from Oshie and Thomas. It was really, really unnecessary batting here. Pete Salmon will come out in the number six position for the Jamaicans. Again a lead of just forty four. And a rumor has reached my ears, Marlon Pinnock. I heard you promise our producer Matthew Rajaram and uh, cameraman Gordo Peer that you'll be taking them for some authentic jerk chicken tomorrow on Friday. Tomorrow and Saturday. Tomorrow and Saturday. My, my, my. <laughs> They're going to get overloaded on jerk chicken. And I also heard another rumor that you are the only man in Jamaica who can get me a ticket to the Champ Sport event, track and field event on Saturday. Yes, it is. Mm. Man of connections, man of power. Penny Rankin, they call him. You're Rankin Penny. You're absolutely correct. Mm. <laughs> well, let's see how Pete Salmon copes. Shane Thomas getting his first wicket. One delivery remaining in his third. One for 14 so far. And that one wicket is a very important wicket to him as well. Getting the Jamaica Scorpion captain, Brandon King. Uh, this is this is sort of the wrong time that you want O'Shane Thomas fired up. End of the day, just gotten his first wicket after bowling a number of overs in the first innings. And he has a middle and low order batter to target. Feeling for that one. Almost getting another wicket in a row here. How did Pete Salmon not get an edge on that one, Penny? <laughs> and at the end of the over, it's all happening here. 54 for 4 after 16. 
So another two of us remaining in the day's play. And immediately as speed someone came to the wicket playing loosely outside the off stump. That's the same way we got out in the first innings as well. Just playing away from his body. So he, he wants to be very mindful of that as well. Rakim Cornwall in his wisdom as uh, Leeward Island's captain has decided to replace Daniel Dorham. And he's replaced him with himself, Cornwall. <laughs> he started bowling from the southern end where he did get the wicket of uh, Lug. Very silly hoik into the cow corner region. We bowling to Kirk McKenzie now from the northern end. Now boarding his walk up there. <laughs> Can't call it a run up at all from, <laughs> from Not at uh, all. <laughs> Cornwall. Even the umpire stands further back from him <laughs> than him. Cornwall stands up in front of the umpire to deliver. I always wonder if you, if, as an umpire, it must be difficult to see if he's overstepping because, of course, he would obscure your vision. Umpire has to bend around the corner to look to see if Cornwall will bowl or no ball. Ooh. Beautiful, beautiful Spun stuff. Spun away him. from the left handed Kurt McKenzie. Good start here by Rakeem Cornwall. Nice push by uh, McKenzie down to the wide long off area. Powell does really well to get off the boundary quickly and it's just a single. That goes to show the commitment of this Leard Island Hurricane team at the moment. They are pumped and why not? Four wickets and a lead of just 44 runs for the Scorpions. Hurricanes well and truly in charge here on the two West Indies Regional Championship Round 5 action from Spina Park. It was Archibald who got rid of Salmon in the first inning. Salmon just uh, made six. You know he's a much better batter than that. Had a score of 80 in the last game against the Academy. That was all the way back in round four. Seems so long ago, Penny. <laughs> but it was actually just about last week at the same time. <laughs> Time is flying very fast here in Jamaica yeah, as well. Time flies when you're having fun. And we're actually having fun here in this regional yeah. championship 2024. Mm. All beaten. Mm. beaten. Beautiful stuff from Cornwall. It's very slow through the year this time around by Rocking Cornwall. In fighting, beat someone on the front foot. But he was beaten all ends up by a beauty from Rocking Cornwall. Appeal for leg before, but uh, really had a big stride in front there, Salmon. Cornwall can't believe it. Let's have a look at the replay here. Well, he's still asking questions, though. I'd have to say it's a stride that saved him. Uh, put the benefits there. of the doubt in the umpire's mind. I think I saw a little signal saying that he may have struck him outside the line of the off stump. That's a good tug down by, uh, or bunt I should say, by Salmon down to long on, and he gets off the mark with a single. And that completes over number 17 at 56 for the loss of four. Final over coming before close of play here, Andrew. Yes, indeed, it's been a long day, a good day of cricket here. Still Jamaica um, Scorpions they had ended the first day at 173 for six. They eventually got to 221 all out. And then uh, the Leeward Islands, they were bowled out 231 uh, during the course of the day. And now it's back to the Scorpions here, who are essentially 46 for four. They've erased the deficit of 10 runs. And they've added 46. So attacking field 
for this final over it's gonna be bowled by Oshin Thomas should be pumped got the wicket in the last over that off the Jamaica Scorpions captain Brandon King as well this time Maroney will be bowling to Pete Summon Scorpions still playing loosely outside the off stump, Andrew. Yeah, indeed. Shane Thomas in this spell so far have looked really good, hitting good areas, causing problems to the Jamaica Scorpions. The batters at the wicket. Play by Salmon, it pushed that into the extra cover region and jog a quick single. You can see the shadows of the players out there. Signify it's coming to the end of play on day two. Four and five. If we, uh, yes, if we look at the two teams of bowling efforts as uh, as compared to the first innings, nice bunch again by by McKenzie, but there'll be no run there. So the Pacers took five wickets. It was equally shared between pace and spin in terms of the Leeward Islands. Uh, Lewis took three, Archibald two, and then Cornwall took three, and Durham two. But for the Jamaicans, they really are depending on their spinners quite heavily. Pete Salmon taking five wickets, Ramal Lewis four, so they took nine wickets. The only wicket uh, to go to pace was Mikhail Louis, who was clean bowled by Durwell Green for a silver duck. Second delivery without a score on the board. And once again here, it's, it's three wickets that have been taken by pace for the Hurricanes well played by McKenzie that is delicate indeed and it's very fine will they come back for two the two will be very very easy Louis had to run all the way around from deep back a point for that one to pick up that one at third man position yeah but I certainly think despite the fact that uh, the Jamaicans lost those early wickets. If Brandon King and McKenzie had been in at the end of the day's play, they would have felt a lot more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, they took the score from 13 to 54, but Brandon King sort of threw away his hand. It's just been a lazy shot outside the off stump, hence why that ball jog on to the stump. These two batters are in the middle need to come up chumps tomorrow for the Scorpions. Well played by Salmon. No chance of a run. And it will be the final delivery, I believe, of the day coming up. O'Shane Thomas finally strikes, getting that wicket of Brandon King. Ball a lot of overs in the first innings and then had a horrific injury while fielding, but it's good to see him out there. Not seeing any extra strapping on that left foot, which was the danger foot. Mackenzie settles to face the last delivery of the day. It's been a really good fighting innings from him. Credit to Kirk Mackenzie. Oh, beaten Ooh. outside the edge. And Mackenzie immediately walks off. He wants nothing more to do with cricket for the day. 59 for four, the Jamaicans end the day at. Uh, so they're batting for the second time today. And some final thoughts from Marlon Pinnock here before we sign off from Sabina Park. Excellent day of cricket been played by these teams at Sabina Park in particular. The Hurricanes did a fantastic job this afternoon to get four wickets. Just a lead of over 40, 49 runs, 
and hats off to Jeremiah Louis getting those two wickets very early this afternoon. Yeah, so that's the story of the day. Jamaica bowled out for 2.21 uh, early this morning and then the Leeward Island Hurricanes, they amassed 2.31, a lead of just 10. And then they struck back against the Jamaicans. They are taking four foot wickets. The Jamaica Scorpions have a lead of just 49 with four wickets back in the hutch. Do join us tomorrow for day three in this round five of the Cricket West Indies Championships between the Jamaica Scorpion and Leeward Island Hurricanes. Which way is it going to go? I really don't know.